Good evening and welcome to SHN Sports presentation of Georgetown Eagle Football. I'm Wally Harmon alongside Kelly Duvall on the road, way down the road, down I-35, maybe 15, 20 miles <laughs> into Pflugerville. We're live at the field here on Pecan 1825. And Kelly, Friday night football, a, a day early, Thursday night, a big game, KBVO in the house. We got to visit with Roger Wallace before we got going. Uh, an opportunity for this Eagle team to turn things around and right this ship against a, a struggling Hendrickson Hawks team. Big opportunity, and Georgetown's got to take full advantage of it. I'm excited for this game, and I'm excited to see how the guys rebound. He had two really tough games back-to-back, -to -back, maybe the two toughest games that we'll face this season. Of course, you don't want to count out College Station. You don't want to count out Cedar Park. But Liberty Hill and A&M Consolidated are going to be tough teams for other teams to beat down the road. We've got those out of the way. Now it's into the meat of the schedule, the heart of the schedule. We've got six district games left to make some noise, and I'm excited about watching this game tonight. These two teams coming to the ball game, both 0-1 in district, and someone has to get a win tonight, uh, yeah, I, we hope. Uh, that it doesn't no end in a tie. No tie. Uh, but Georgetown comes in 2-2 two and two on the year overall. 0-1 a district play after a tough 14-point loss to A&M Consolidated last Friday night. Hendrickson comes in 1-3 and three on the year. 0-1 a district play. Wanting to right that ship. Uh, some athletic players on this team, a returning quarterback uh, that started last year in, in Rodriguez. A and so experience there on that side of the ball. Uh, it, uh, offensive to defensive lines. That's I, I think that's where you got to have the battle. Uh, I think the battle's got to be tonight. Uh, we talked to Logan Gegelman, uh, Gegelman. Gegelman, uh th last night at the coaches show there at uh, at the high school, a and he talked about. Uh, you know, we asked him, is it is it a situation after two tough losses like that that the offensive line starts to backpedal, or they decide, hey, we've got to get better. And we've got to come together and, and work harder and get better and and, and run the, the line of scrimmage. And the first thing Logan says is, it's going to make us better. Uh, we, we see where we've got to be. The two things, uh, the, the one thing to take from the last two games, I, I think the most is the hole that this team has dug for themselves. Right. Uh, to get down so big in the first half and have to make the adjustments at halftime and to win the second halves. But you're so far behind right. at that point. The offense and this team can't let that happen again tonight. The Liberty Hill game, our first three drives ended because of mistakes Georgetown made, not because of anything that Liberty Hill did. In the game last week, same kind of thing. The first two drives for Georgetown ended on our mistakes. We got first drive, we got into, into uh, a and consolidated territory, had a costly penalty and backed us up, the, the, the drive shut down, and then the second drive, same kind of deal. Our mistakes cost us. Would the game, would the outcome have been different? I don't know, but it's not like we got blown off the field in those games. We dug deep holes, fought back, so now it's the opportunity for this team to prove to themselves and to everybody else, hey, we're a good football team. Noah Boris. I, I think the conversation went to him last night talking to Coach Griffin, and it goes back to it today. I think it's only right to discuss this young man being uh, pushed into uh, action uh, in the Liberty Hill game due to the injury to Tucker Griffin. Uh, and Boris has responded yeah. uh, to have a junior quarterback, no varsity experience, uh, and to step in. And if you look at it, uh, we, we were looking at some of the stats and, and things you have. A game last week, 312 yards, two TDs, 103 quarterback rating. He stepped in in his first start against a top team in this state and actually controlled and ran this game and did a great job in the passing game uh, for, for these Eagles. You expect more of that? You expect. I, I, I think it's right to expect uh, with the more and more practices under his belt with this first team that, that that's just going to keep allowing him to get more and more comfortable running this offense and allow Coach Griffin to kind of continue to – to, to allow that flower to expand in that playbook to open up for Noah and to see that arm. We talked to Drayden Dickman kind of off air last night about that. And, hey, are things going to start opening up? And he goes, I think you'll be surprised. Well, and we saw in the first couple of series, I think you saw the play calling be a little cautious. I think you saw Noah be a little cautious. But once he got comfortable and started running the offense, I think very little changed from what it would have been if Tucker were in the game if he weren't injured. 
And I, I think you really saw Noah and the other players start to settle down with Noah under center. Not really under center, but behind the center because <laughs> we never go under center. But with Noah back there running the offense, I think everybody got comfortable, including the coaching staff. And they started seeing what he was comfortable with, what was working, what was – and they made some changes. And that's when the offense was starting to be able to move the football. And tonight you'll see in a little while when we go over the starting lineups for both teams, this is a young, inexperienced Hendrickson team. They've got a bunch of juniors. Some of the seniors that they have aren't very experienced. So it's a young team. So this is an opportunity for Georgetown to come out, play sound football, tackle well, take care of their assignments, and hopefully get out of here and dominate a Hendrickson team. Just get out of here with the W. And I think this is first year for head coach Doug Pierce yes. uh, to run this Hendrickson Hawk offense as he uh, steps in as the head coach. Uh, and, and so a challenge uh, for any coach in high school, uh, maybe outside of Tony Salazar at Westlake, to step yeah. into a, a rough situation uh, as, as Westlake continuing to just uh, exert their dominance uh, at the 6A level. Uh, with a big win, I tell you what. Last week, I heard that was a a man a man's football game <laughs> between Westlake and Lake Travis. So much talent, uh, yeah. so much uh, Friday night spectacular uh, play going on in the Central Texas area. Uh, tomorrow night, we were all discussing, you know, what do we do on our Friday night off? Mainer and Vandergriff. What a game! Dripping Springs. Uh, hosting uh, at, at their place again, Buda Johnson. That rivalry moved up from 5A to 6A. But what Dripping Springs has done in Austin Novosad, oh, man, impressive 77 to nothing win against uh, Austin High and then 55 to 7 against Bowie uh, at Bowie's homecoming. I, I, they answered some questions. What are they doing? And, and it's Hutto having a great year. Maynard stepping into 6A. Weiss kind of taking a step back into 6A, getting kind of smacked around a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but there's so much good football in this area. Uh, and, and tonight, uh, an opportunity for this Georgetown Eagle to uh, Eagle team to kind of reset and, and, and restart the momentum. Then they're back at home. The next two games were the visitors in that second game at home against Eastview, but a hometown battle there uh, against Eastview. But the next two weeks at home. And so an opportunity to kind of get settled in on this district run and kind of get your feet set, get it to a three and one point if you can. But this team, I love the focus. We talk to them and we always ask them, it's not about that. It's about let's go one and oh, control what we can tonight. It's it's interesting to talk to these kids because it and, and you heard coach talk about it. You'll hear him talk a little bit more about it in the interview in just a few minutes. They had two opportunities in the last two games to quit and get blown out and they didn't. And that speaks volumes. So now you've got to take that next step. Now you've got to play sound football for four quarters against the team that you should be very competitive against, should outmatch a little bit. But there's talent on both sides of the field tonight, so it's going to be interesting to see how Georgetown reacts. One of the things, we're, we're so excited that we get to bring these games to our viewers on YouTube, but if you get to be in the stadium, you see – the athleticism and the size of some of these high school kids, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, just massive, some of these kids. And then the ones that aren't massive, just really good athletes. And it's a lot of fun to be here in person and see this level of athleticism at this early age. And I think, David, I got a, a first-hand view of that last night. Logan Gegelman came up to interview with us, and, and it's asking questions as I peered up at Logan Gegelman, a senior lineman, uh, offensive lineman for this team. And and it was just like, man, these are some massive kids out here. Uh, and so, yeah. and then you talk to a, a, a young man, uh, athletic running back, Andrew Petter, and how he's grown from his sophomore year to his junior year and that development and the, the, the eagerness to see where he develops into his senior year next year. Hey, I, I, I do have to say this. Brandon Stovall is so much fun to talk to, so much fun to be around. He's one of my favorite players on this team. I like talking to that kid. I like watching him play. And now tonight he's got the old-style blue sock above the white sock, <laughs> that old-school look. I love it. Uh, love it. So just a useless bit of information there to look at, but I love that look. And it, it's going to be a fun night, beautiful night. This is the most beautiful Friday, uh, Thursday night. You said that. as I'm, I'm kind of looking around. We have about a 180-degree view here in the press box. Uh, overlooking Pflugerville and not a cloud in the not sky. Uh, the sun's <laughs> starting to set behind us, uh, and, and the shade is on pretty much overtaking the field. By the time we start the game uh, here in about 29 minutes, it, it'll be shaded yeah. out. Uh, and so a beautiful night. These, these cool, the coolness coming in just awesome. is that, that perfect football weather 
uh, and, and and for these kids, and you know, uh, an opportunity. Georgetown, I'm looking forward to it. Coach talking yep. about, hey, homecoming's next weekend, but we're on a four-day weekend, so the dance is this weekend. Let's get that out of our system and, and be ready to focus on homecoming game the next week against Leander. You were, uh, Kelly, you were able to talk to Coach Griffin. I was. Uh, earlier in the week. Walk us through that, set us up, and take us to that interview. So we'll show you the interview, but Coach Griffin was really upbeat, and you, you could expect for – a human being to get down after two kind, two two very similar games back to back, but Coach Griffin was really excited and had a lot of interesting things to say about how the team developed from that. And here's that interview for y'all. We welcome to the pregame show countdown to kickoff here on SHN Sports. Head coach Chuck Griffin. Coach, thanks for joining us this morning. Hey Kelly, good to be here. So, tough loss this week to a very tough A&M consolidated team. I think we all knew they were going to be very talented. But uh, talk about that game a little bit and what you saw from consolidated and from from your boys. You know, I, I think they were a really good football team. I, I, I knew they would be. Um, you know, just been watching them on film, saw them last year and, and knew kind of where they were and, and how good they were. Maybe a little surprised how good they were up defensive front-wise. Uh, probably the best – defensive line we've played since maybe 2019 versus Richmond Foster. Um, really good D-line. Um, you know, so we had a tough time running the football. Um, but, I mean, I was really proud of our coaches and our kids, the way they responded, uh, you know, kind of adjusted the game plan a little bit and, and uh, were able to make some things happen. And I really feel like our kids fought really hard. Um, you know, to pull within 14 in a game like that late in the game it, it is, is pretty good. And, uh, you know, a few bounces and, and it's all of a sudden we're, we're competing to win the game right there at the end. Um, you know, so um, we'll get better. Challenge this week has been, you know, that's the level we want to play at. We feel very strongly that that's a, a second round level team that, that we have trouble getting out of the second round. That's the type of team they are. Um, you know, so it's, it's a good uh, viewpoint of where we are right now and how much better we have to get at the end of the season and the playoff run and, and, and get to where we can beat a team at that level. Well, we all knew that the new district was going to be tough with the addition of A&M Consolidated and uh, yep. College Station. You know, Eastview's in the district now. Hendrickson's going to be a tough task this week. Um, but A&M Consolidated on both lines were just massive. Yeah, they, they were big. Um, you know, I, I even pointed out to our booster club last night, you know, we – we hit Drayden on a on a vertical ball. Um, he's got about five or six yards on the corner, and I mean that's a place where Drayden goes and scores. And they tackled him, you know. And and we had him beat, and they tackled him. That that just shows the speed they had in the back end um, as well. So I mean that that's one of the reasons they're able to be so good up front and play the scheme they play up front is because they they can run on the back end as well. And they were really gifted athletically. We were their their mm -hmm. running game showed that the the their running backs were very patient in their running game. Just waited for those big hosses up front to move people. Yeah. Talk about the the difficulty in the first half with the run game versus the second half seemed to shore up a little bit. What what changed? You know, I I, th I think just just figuring out the speed, you know, a little bit of those guys and figuring out a few different things of what they were doing and the way we could attack it defensively um, helped us in the second half. So, like I said, I think our coaches did a really good job making adjustments and our kids did a great job following through with those adjustments in the second half and, and putting us in a position to, to have a really good second half. So this week we'll be at the field in Pflugerville playing a Hendrickson Hawks team that, um, I don't know that they surprised anybody, but pretty quality football team in Hendrickson as well. Yeah, they are. They're a good football team. Uh, you know, they're going to be pretty athletic. And then, uh, you know, they're, they're a dangerous football team because they're sitting there one and three. And, and uh, you know, you can take that re record and throw it out the window. Um, you know, last year we were sitting there one and four, you know, close to this point, And we were probably the best one and four team in the whole state and uh, very easily could have been five and oh. And so I, I think you got to throw that out the window and, and realize that they're they're a good football team. Um, they've uh, they got some returners back from last year and and they're going to be pr pretty good to handle. So how do you how do you keep the kids focused? They had a tough loss against Liberty Hill, got got behind big and then fought back. You had this tough loss against A and M Consolidated, got behind kind of big and but fought back. How do you get the kids focused back to attacking this Hendrickson team with some confidence? 
You know, I, I think that's the key is is what we've been talking about this week is getting better. All right. So we we see this as a, a really tough, um, you know, that was a really tough task, probably the best team we've played all year, maybe the best team we will play all year. Um, you know, and OK, we've got another one good coming down the road, that same caliber in four weeks. So the idea is how good can we be in four weeks? Can we get can we be in a position to play with a team like that? So to do that, we've got to get better every single day. You know, we got to get good enough to, to beat Hendrickson this week. Um, you know, have to be good enough to beat somebody the next week. And, and that's the mentality that we got to have is we're going to get better every single rep, every single day and, and, and try to hold ourselves to that standard. Um, you know, the big thing we're trying to teach right now is that look to, to win championships. You've got to be a champion first. Doesn't you don't get to be a champion and uh, you don't get to win championships. And all of a sudden, Hey, I am a champion. It's the other way around. So it's just developing that mentality and everything that I do, uh, you know, in the practice field, in the locker room, in the weight room, in the classroom, you know, uh, of being in a position where they're able to give 100% effort because they've taken care of all their business and they can be super focused on what we're doing and be ready to go. Let's talk about the job Noah Boris did in his first start running that offense. Looked like he, May have gotten off to a little bit of a shaky start, but he really stepped up well and did a good job of running that offense. Yeah, he did. Uh, Noah Noah played really well and, and did a good job. You know, we put him in some situations where he didn't have to make too many decisions and was able to just get rid of the ball pretty quickly to to our guys. He had a couple of big throws, you know, on the night when we needed him to. So Noah did a fantastic job. And, uh, I mean, just like we expect him to. We, you know, we've, we talk about good quarterbacks all the way back the – you know, the first one I was around was Garrett Gilliland, but Morgan Mickett and, and um, you know, th those guys ahead of him. And, and there's a whole line of quarterbacks that, that have been here that, um, you know, when the one's down, the other one's ready to step in. And, and so that's that's been the deal. Tucker's down right now and, and Noah's ready to step in and take over and um, is doing really good. So we're, we're excited about that as, as Tucker continues to get well and, and – Heal up, man. We won't, we're gonna challenge. We're gonna challenge Noah to get out there and continue to run things. Do a good job. Speaking of which, how is Tucker doing? He's doing fine. Um, you know, just this kind of boring phase right now. You can't do a whole lot. You uh, you got to let it heal before you can do much rehab. So, not much happening on that front. You know, he's out there every day trying to coach Noah up and and trying to help help out in the position groups and and help our offense. You know, from kind of the backside and. Um, you know, riding the bike and those kind of things. So he, he's pretty bored right now, to be honest with you. So what's Hendrickson going to throw at, at the Eagles this week? You, you think they'll stack up like A&M did to stop the run, stop Andrew and make Noah beat him with his arm? Or You know, I, I don't know. I don't know that they'll do that just because that, that, that hasn't been evidence of what they do, um, you know, even versus Glenn. Um, you know, that's not kind of the way they handled it. Um, you know, and, and I don't think – um, you know, one of the reasons a Consolidated was able to do that, one, is they were good inside, really good. And two, they were so good in the back end, they could match up with us. I think we present with with Marquise and Drayden on the perimeter, we present some matchup problems. So um, there, there's a few issues out there. If you're going to try to load the box, then we ought to be able to know ought to have a good night throwing the ball like he did last week. So who stood out this past week? Who players of the game? Uh, you know, um, Austin Nelson was our offensive lineman of the week, played probably his best game and, and graded out pretty good. Um, you know, Andrew Petter, again, found a way, only rushed for 43 yards, but had four touchdowns and and uh, had 106 yards receiving in a touchdown, uh, which really helped us out. And, um, you know, Noah played well, um, stepped in there and did exactly what he's called to do and be and put us in a position to, to, to be successful, um, you know, um, uh, Drayden had over 100 yards receiving, and and uh, and um, I, I think Marquise had seven catches. You know, so those guys played really well. And, and defensively, um, you know, Brandon Hawkins, or sorry, Brandon Stovall, felt like we had he had a really good game this last week, and and Leo Diaz as well in the back end. Um, you know, um, Jug and uh, or sorry, Daniel Bina and and, um, and Michael did well inside and just continued to to play well. So. Um, even top Scholes in the back end did well. So I really feel like we had some guys that that performed pretty good. Um, we just have to figure out how good we can be, you know, and, and, and get ready to, to beat some really good football teams. So um, I did want to talk about Andrew a little bit in the running game. He The, the, the running game struggled against really good A&M Consolidated, but Andrew did Andrew things with those short passes out. 
yeah, sure. To the edges. And w- was that the plan, just to get the ball into his hands? Yeah, I, I mean, we, we struggled. We, we were not able to move those guys up front. So we really couldn't create any seams or any gaps for him inside. So that was the plan. It's okay. We got to give him the ball in space. Um, if they're going to, they're going to, pack everything in there really tight and we got to figure out how to get get him the ball out in space and so that's what we're able to do yep he, he had a good night good well coach we appreciate your time thanks for joining us again hey, and best Kelly. of luck against the hawks this week all right thank you man folks that's head coach chuck griffin your georgetown eagles stick with us countdown to kickoff continues JCT Broadcast Booth is sponsored by JMTs in Round Rock. JMTs provides customized apparel and promotional items to small businesses, schools, and nonprofit organizations. Our services include screen printing, embroidery, and promotional items. Our game-changing direct-to-film printing allows JMTs to print full-color graphics on your garments. JMTs has the experience and confidence to take on any order. Visit our website at jmts.com or call us at That's right. We're back live at the uh, Field in Pflugerville, Texas, the beautiful stadium here at Pflugerville ISD, uh, the one and only uh, stadium for Pflugerville Independent School District and their four football uh, programs, their high schools. And what a beautiful stadium it is. We're live in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth brought to you by JMT's Omar and Susie Tonkins doing a great job there at JMT's. Uh, go visit them, jmt.com, uh, one of a kind. They are, uh, they'll take care of you. I, I can't wait. I'm getting ready to pack up uh, my order of uh, freshly made hoodies from JMT's and take them out to Las Vegas to our team for our uh, competition next week. And I tell you what, they n- nothing. Uh, they, they do magic and, and coming up with the designs and making it, turning the product back out to you. But we appreciate their sponsorship of Georgetown Eagle football. And a tip of the cap to the Pflugerville Independent School District Athletic Department. They are so accommodating, so welcoming, and it is such a pleasure to work with the folks over here in Pflugerville, and uh, we appreciate that. It sure makes a difference, makes our ability to bring these games easier, and a beautiful facility, great staff, so thank you, Pflugerville ISD. The Georgetown Eagles coming to the ball game. the visitors tonight, and, man, what a change. Uh, it almost feels like color rush night of the NFL, Kelly. Right. The Eagles in the silver attire, silver pants, silver jersey, silver helmet. The uh, Hendrickson Hawks in the navy blue pants, navy blue jerseys, navy blue helmet. Uh, and so it's a, a night tonight. The blue, if you like blue and navy, uh, uh, navy blue and silver, it, it's a night for you out here in Pflugerville. It is a beautiful night for high school football. The sun's setting. Uh, the, even the Georgetown crowd is enjoying some of the shade over there as the sun sets behind the press box here tonight. Uh, the battle, uh, second game of district. One of these teams comes out with a one and one record. One of these teams goes to the bottom of the district, zero oh, and two. Not a good spot to be when you have teams like A and M Consolidated, College Station, Cedar Park, <laughs> Pflugerville, uh, Hendrickson, Georgetown, Le- uh, Eastview, Leander. So many good teams. Leander, Glenn, uh, a rough gauntlet, and zero oh, and two start uh, will be a tough one to dig out from. Well, tonight the the key for Georgetown is going to be Noah Boris. The junior quarterback that's filling in for the injured Tucker Griffin. Noah's going to have to run this offense, run it well, not not make mistakes with the football, hang on to the football, keep turnovers to a minimum. And, and Noah's done a good job last week, did a good – should should have an opportunity to, to make some plays tonight. So it's going to be interesting to, to watch Noah progress tonight. And then look at the reaction. What does this Georgetown do, team do to respond to two tough losses – this defense tested and uh, beat up in the last two games, allowing 880 rushing yards, 11 TDs, 8.6 yards per carry. Uh, an opportunity them from to do one of two things, Kelly. Uh, either right the ship, 
uh, get back into that mode of the first two games of the season. We saw them um, hitting, uh, tackling, r uh, flying to the ball, or, or they can tuck tail and run. And I don't see that from this team as they've responded in both of the second halves in the last two weeks, uh, and I think they're due for a full game. I think the defense plays a critical part in setting the tone for these Eagles tonight. Absolutely. And we got to you, – you know there had to be an emphasis on the fundamentals. I, I, I can't even imagine how many tackling drills they did this week, but they've got to tackle. You just have to tackle. And as, as intricate as these offenses have, have become, I mean, you're seeing just – wide open, almost West Coast style offenses almost every week with the exception of the week you play Liberty Hill. But you're seeing these very intricate offenses, but it boils down to the simple parts of this game. You have to protect the football on offense and you have to attack the football on defense. Sure tackling, sound tackling, good blocking, and that's going to be the key tonight for Georgetown to come out shake off the dust and the rust from those last two games and get back here tonight, try to get a W over here in Pflugerville. Offensively for these Eagles, I, I think uh, a key component tonight is going to be the running game. Oh, yeah. Uh, Andrew Petter comes into the ball game. He, he's rushed for 651 yards, 10 touchdowns, averaging eight yards a carry, 162 yards a game. Before last week, Andrew was averaging well over 200 yards per game. Uh, he shut down. The running game as a whole shut down for the Eagles last week. Uh, against uh, A&M Consolidated, they th their defensive line. We talked to coach about that during the the, the coaches show that uh, you're you're talking about a defensive line that just dominated. Right. They had every answer yeah. in the book for every play run uh, ran by this Eagle team, and every time they tried to do something, uh, you know, a run pass option, they were there. They responded to it, and that defensive line had some massive players. How does the offense respond to that? Do they go back to that running game? I think you have to with yeah. a, a, a running back like Andrew Petter. Uh, but you, you expect to see a good performance out of Andrew Petter tonight. And then, of course, you have your weapons on the outside. You've got Drayden Digman and you've got Marquise Dominguez, uh, both of them sitting there uh, up over, uh, 20, over 20 catches apiece, 25 for Digman for 354 yards, averaging 14 yards per catch. Uh, Dominguez, 284 yards on 23 receptions, but four TDs, a target there in the end zone, and he likes to go up and make uh, the dramatic catch uh, in the corner. He likes to climb the the, the you know climb up uh, in the corner of that end zone, go up over the defensive back. We saw that many times last year. Marquise just making great catches up over the defenders. So Boris has his targets out there, and then you'd add into the mix Weston Bruce, uh, Jacob Weisheimer, uh, multiple other weapons, Dax Lambright to spread this ball out. And this offense showed that last week, that they can spread it out uh, as Boris threw for over 300 yards. So it's just an opportunity to get back into their groove after two tough weeks against two tough opponents uh, and to respond. And I, I think it, it, it's time for that to happen. I think these boys are ready to, to do that. The first three weeks, Andrew Petter had 200 yards per game rushing. Last week was the first time he got shut down in the running game, but he was able to gain some yardage out on the edges on those quick swing passes which is just an extension of the running game. So if Andrew can get going tonight, have another 175, 200 yards on the ground tonight, that's just going to open up the passing game for Dominguez and for Dickman and give Noah opportunities in the pocket to make some things happen. And he does well when he's forced out of the pocket and scrambles because he's not instantly tucking the ball and running. He's looking for a receiver to come back and help him out, and he's made some big plays whenever he's been able to do that. I think you could just liken uh, Boris to just, you know, that old adage, cool as a cucumber. Yeah. Uh, he has stepped in, in in a stressful situation, you would think, for anybody else, and he's just performed. A tough situation to come into, uh, down uh, a lot against Liberty Hill and try to bring this offense back, bring this team back, and then against uh, uh, your first start in high school as a junior yeah. <laughs> against one of the top schools and uh, programs in 5A Division One football. Uh, one of the top teams in this state. And, and so it just uh, uh, a challenge for Noah, and you'll see how he responds again as he gets more and more comfortable uh, with this offense. Starting lineups, Kelly, I think you've got them for us. Let's go to that. Yeah, they are they're queued up, I think, or getting close to being queued up. But in the starting lineups, pay, pay attention to um, the, the youth that is there for – Yeah, there we go. All right, sorry about that. Pay attention to the youth on the Hendrickson Here's side. Here's tonight's ball. starting lineup for the Hendrickson Hawks. On offense for the Hawks tonight, at quarterback, number 17, Joseph Rodriguez, a senior. The tailback is number 24, junior Carson Workman. Wide receivers are number 4, junior Clint Smith, and number 6, Brian Ray, a senior. 
The left tackle is number 70, junior Luca Matamoros. The left guard is number 55, Dominic Valdez, a sophomore. The center is number 67, Cash Divert, a senior. The right guard is number 78, Ronald Simmons, he's a junior. The right tackle is number 76, senior Christian Flores. The wide receiver on the other side is number 18, Keontae Fowler, a junior. And the tight end is number 25, Courtney Dawson, a senior. On defense for the Hawks, number 88 is defensive end Braden DeRocher, a junior. The nose guard is number 58, Tori Stegall, a senior. The defensive end on the other side is number 82, senior Miles Flores. The linebackers are number 5, Damo Kuaku, he's a senior. Number 11, senior Tony Brown. Number 44, Braxton Brown, he's a junior. And number 27, Jalen West, a senior. The cornerbacks are number 3, Daniel Pena, a senior. And number 34, junior Jacob Gladney. The safeties are number 10, Spencer DeStefano, a junior. And number 12, Trace Dalton, a senior. Here's the starting lineup for your Georgetown Eagles. We begin with the offense. At right tackle is number 78, Austin Nelson. He's a senior. At right guard is junior Jordan Erat, number 76. At center is number 65, Broden Elliott. He's a senior. Left guard is number 72, junior Ian Sanders. The left tackle is number 77, Logan Gegelman. He's a senior. At tight end is number 17, Jacob Weisheimer, a junior. The wide receivers for the Eagles are number six, Drayden Dickman, a senior. And number two, Marquise Dominguez, he's a junior. The slot receivers are number 11, Weston Bruce, a senior, and number 26, Cody Hoyaback, a junior. The running back is number 22, Andrew Petter, a junior. And at quarterback is number 12, Noah Boris, a junior. On defense for your Eagles tonight, number 35, Brandon Stovall is the defensive end, and number five, Daniel Obina, the senior, is the nose. The tackle is Michael Valenta, number 99, he's a junior. And the bandit is number 39, Tyler Duncan, a senior. The linebackers for the Eagles at the Mike linebacker position, number 13, Landry Leggett, a junior. The whip linebacker is number eight, Jacob Faltasek, he's a senior. And the razor linebacker is number 10, senior Ian Lewis. The safeties for the Eagles are number nine, Gabriel DeNova, a senior and number 41, Thomas Scholes, also a senior. The corners, number 19, Colin Casey, a senior, and number three, senior Leo Diaz. Tonight on special teams, the kicker and punter is number 30, Aaron Guzman, a junior. The snapper for extra points and field goals is number 99, Michael Valenta, and the holder is quarterback number 12, Noah Boris. The long snapper on punts tonight is number 41, Thomas Scholes. And on punt returns and kick returns is number six, Raiden Dickman. And that's the starting lineup for your Eagles. And that's your starting lineup for the Hendrickson Hawks and your Georgetown Eagles. Both of the school alma maters are being played by the bands, respectively, as they get ready to go. And then we're going to be ready for the national anthem. So we'll find the national the flag hanging here. It's got the colors are about to be posted somewhere. I saw the uh, honor color guard. There they are. D down in the corner. They'll post here in a minute. So we'll go to a, a national anthem here in just a few minutes. Both teams, uh, I think, you, you get come in on a high. Uh, both teams coming off of a low of a loss, Kelly, uh, but on a high that, hey, we've got to end that. It's time to go 1-0 and this week and, and to get uh, back into the mix of this uh, uh, this district contest and, and try to uh, right the ship early on and not get into a big hole early in district. That's got to be such a challenge for the coaching staff at any school is to keep 16-, 17-, 18-year-old kids focused after two losses like that with, with Hendrickson focused after a loss like that. It's really easy to get down, but – it's a long season, and so the, the challenge for the coaches is to keep the players focused, keep their minds in the game, 
and just go to what you do. And, and you talking to Coach Griffin. It, we talked to him last night, talking to Coach Nicky at Standing Around, and, and the, it, just seeing these players, they, they don't seem defeated. Right. And, and you've got to love that when they could have easily given up. Uh, you know, Coach, one thing he said yesterday at the coaches' show was, usually when you see programs get down by 20 in the first half, they typically lose by 40 or more. Right. This team has fought back and been within a score in the fourth quarter in the last two games with opportunities to get right back into these ball games to win them, to com compete for a, a win at the end and, and tie things up. Uh, and, and so the, the fight is there. It, it's just putting it all together in four quarters to get back on that winning way for this Eagle team. Uh, and uh, tonight they're primed for it. Uh, they got an opponent that uh, gives them a chance at that uh, in a young Hendrickson Hawks team that's one and three on the year. The Eagles have a chance to get back above 500 to get even in district play as they're both teams warm up in the south end zone. The Hawks inflatable, the Eagles inflatable, ready to go. The Georgettes, the cheerleaders across the way, ready to go here at the field. Pflugerville ISD Stadium, beautiful here on 1825 Pecan in Pflugerville, Texas. Next week, it'll be Friday night homecoming. Kelly Duvall will have the call alongside Nathaniel Funk of Edward Jones. He will be in the booth to uh, be the color analyst for Kelly next week as Zombie out of town. And so Kelly will have the game live homecoming back from Berkelbach Field, 7 p.m. here on SHN, uh, 6.15 pregame. <laughs> we'll get that figured out. That was so funny. Yeah. 6.15, but it said 6.20. That's all me. And uh, so we'll get that ship right in here as we, <laughs> uh, we fight forward through the season. But what a fun season it's been. Uh, this team has fought in four games. Two tough opponents back-to-back. -back. An opportunity here tonight. Uh, some keys to the game. Kelly, for you, what, what sticks out? What does this Eagle team have to do early to jump on this Hawks team and, and take it home? I don't think they have to do anything extraordinary. I just think they got to take care of the basics. Protect the football in the first couple of drives. Tackle on defense in the first couple of drives. And I think you go out of here with a win. It, t tonight's about the basics and getting back to the basics and dominating a team that you may be able to dominate, put some points on the board. I, I see defensively tackling. If this defense can set the tone, maybe a quick couple of three and outs, uh, some good stands and not let some points get put on the board, keep them out of the end zone, maybe a field goal or two allowed. But this defense, to turn the tide of that momentum and give the ball back to this offense and let them go to work. Uh, and, and I think the line of scrimmage, I, I think this office, offensive line is poised uh, to have a dominant game. Uh, and I think they want to to build on the uh, on the, the the two rough weeks they've had, but to answer that call, uh, to step up, to make changes amongst themselves, and to give this offense that push they've got to have from the front to control the momentum. And I think that's what you're going to see with Georgetown tonight. They're wearing the silver uniforms. The player loves what the players love wearing those silver uniforms. They get excited about that, and I think that's part of the reason they got them out this week. It's just a little bit of a change, a little bit of a different look. Hendrickson's wearing the dark blue jerseys with the black pants. So you have the two contrasts, not only in uniforms, but in styles of football that I think you're going to be seeing tonight on both these teams. The Eagles take the field through their inflatable as the, the a core of dads in the corner remove it from the end zone there in the south end zone as the team runs down to the north end zone. What happened to the big the, – did it? They ordered a new inflatable this year. The latest update was it's in line to be sewn, and it's still <laughs> delayed. And so uh, they still await the new one. And so they're patchworking together what they have – uh, with the old one, and they ordered this kind of like the white jerseys. At some point, we'll see plenty that of time. But ordered early on and just came in, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Here come the Hawks down to uh, to the sidelines as they come through their inflatable with the blue smoke, and uh, they are greeted with a good crowd here tonight for Pflugerville. And across the way, the Georgetown Eagle band ready to go. Uh, good student section across the way for the Eagles. Line it up down there on the rail. Uh, talking to uh, Gegelman last night and to Leo Diaz. Do you guys see that? Do you guys hear that? Do you guys feel that? And they love it. Yeah. Uh, they said it, it's just been something that they enjoy. And, and this this uh, group of student uh, students right now is just showing out volleyball, uh, bat, uh, football. They're, they're coming out and making a difference uh, in supporting their, their fellow classmates. It makes a huge difference. And uh, tip of the cap to the Blue Crew this year. They've done a phenomenal job. Students are always doing a pretty uh, a good job, but this year's – a step above and reminds me back of 2017, 2018, had our super good uh, blue crew that year too. So it's fun to see and exciting to see. And hopefully these kids are enjoying these games. The officials seem to be meeting and kind of gathering the 
captains here, but I think they're going to wait for that as the colors get ready to post out of the north end zone. We'll see if we can get the PA bringing that to, to us live here in the stadium at the field. Quick shout out to all our viewers on YouTube. We appreciate you joining us throughout the broadcast tonight. You're going to see some uh, sponsorship ads. We would ask that if one of our sponsors has some needs that they can help you meet, please go see them and thank them for helping make these broadcasts possible. Color Guard Commander, Senior Colors, Cadet Captain, Andrew Stringer. Junior Colors, Cadet Corporal, Garrett Junior ROTC for Pflugerville Hendrickson High School. Present the colors. When they are set, we will go to the national anthem and be back with the call of the ball game. After the presentation of the colors, the national anthem will be sung by the Hendrickson High School Choir under the direction of Brandon Baker. And now, our national anthem. Georgetown Eagles, the Hendrickson Hawks, ready to do battle here at the field in Pflugerville. Kelly Duvall alongside myself, Wally Harmon, with the call tonight. We're live here in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth. Dave England on camera, Jerry and Harmon producing it, and Holden Tuma, the statistician here with us tonight, bringing us all those stats we brought you in the pregame. Uh, Holden doing such great work to help keep us going and updated with these players and all the effort uh, that they put forward. It is a Tuma. It is a Tuma. And then we'll look at the different captains coming out for the Eagles tonight. Number nine, Gabriel DeNova. Number 10, Ian Lewis. Number 39, Tyler Duncan. And number 41, Thomas Scholes. For the Hendrickson Hawks, number five, Damo Kuakua. Number six, Brian Ray. Number 10, Spencer DiStofano. And number 11, Tony Brown. 
The uh, players think, head to the midfield. I think that name is pronounced Kuaku. 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 That was. I think. De Stefano. I don't know. We'll have to figure out a couple of these names. And now they shake hands in the middle of the field. They'll have the coin toss. We'll see if it's over the PA system for you. It is not. They do not have it down on the field. And you do love to see it as the colors uh, made their way off the field. Both teams standing there uh, at, a, at, at attention in, in their line there waiting for the flags to leave the field. Uh, you just love seeing that. Just in the full embodiment of uh, love for country, love for their schools, and, and and the effort. Georgetown will get the ball to start the ball game. They'll be receiving from the north end, left to right. If you're just listening, if you're not able to watch, so the Eagles will receive from this north end and take it to the south here in the first quarter of play. Hendrickson will kick off from the south end. I believe they won the toss and deferred. So the Eagles, a, an opportunity to set the tone early, Kelly. Uh, let this offense get to work. Let Noah Boris, let Andrew Petter, uh, let this offensive line. Uh, try to pose their will on this Hawks defense early and get the tone set for this uh, this Eagle team. I didn't see if it was a deferment to the second half, but I like Georgetown getting the ball to start this off. You want Noah and the offense to, to have some confidence. Just jump out there and let's start running this ball down their throat and put some points on the board on this first drive. How about that? The Hawks take the field. Get ready to kick it off. Back deep for your Eagles. None other than... Drayton Dickman and Andrew Petter. They both head to about the 10 or the five yard line. Had, back to receive. I had to text Snoop Daniel from Flex ATX and let him know that Dolphins hat just looks terrible. <laughs> hey, but they're three and oh, getting ready tonight. They, are. they go four and oh. And it's time for some football, buddy. Thursday night football is upon us here on SHN. The kicker for the Hawks measures it up and he'll back away. Number 37 will do the kicking duties. That'll be Devin. Trying to get it. I think I misspelled his name. I apologize. He'll be a sophomore kicker. So a young kicker kicks it away. Petter fields it at the 19, takes it to the near sideline. He's got an opening pass to 30. Makes a couple of men miss, 35 yard line. And good field position for these Eagles as they take the opening kick. Petter returns it about 15 yards up to the 35, and the Eagles have it first and 10. Well, we saw Hendrickson disciplined on their kick coverage, or that could have been significantly longer gain than it was. It's a good gain, good to start at 35-yard line, but Hendrickson's guys sniffed it out and stayed in their lanes, and, and you like to see well-coached, disciplined football teams. The Eagles come out for their first play of the ball game. Three receivers left, two right, empty backfield. For Noah Boris, he'll be in the shotgun formation near side hash mark. Now Petter in motion to the left side. He'll stop in the backfield on the left side of Boris. Snap back, handed off to Petter to the right side. Up past 35-40, finds a hole, spins a tackler down at about the 44-yard line. A gain of nine yards on first down, brings up second and one. We talked about how patient A&M Consolidated's running backs were last week, and they were very patient, but you just saw some similar patience from Andrew on that. He let the blocks develop, let the hole open, and then hit the hole for a good gain on first down. We need to see a lot of Andrew Petter tonight. Dax Lambright comes to the right side. Three receivers right, one left. Marquise Dominguez alone on the left side. Boris has Petter to his right. Shotgun snap back. Quick look out to the left side. Hits Marquise at the 50-yard line. Makes a man miss and drags one inside the 45. They'll spot him out at the 45 of the Hawks. And a borrow for Morrow first down for the Eagles. Noah had that ball out of his hand before Dominguez ever made his cut. And that's what you like to see on those timing routes. That ball's in the air. It reduces the opportunity for the defensive backs to get out there and make a play on it because the ball's already in the air while they're watching the receiver run his route. One receiver left, one right now. Tight end on the right side. Petter directly behind Boris. Snap back, handed off to Petter. He comes to the right side, finds a gap. One tackler, he's trying to drag him. He breaks free and then gets stacked up, but then moves the pile. He breaks free again. Petter past the wow. 35. What a run there. A big run on first down. That's another. Borrow for Morrow first down and all at the hands of Andrew Petter. I'm going to start a fan club for Andrew Petter, and I'm going to be the president of it, and we're going to call it the Petter Heads because that guy, <laughs> I love watching him run the football. A 12-yard run on first down gives the Eagles another first down at 33-yard line of Hendrickson. Two receivers left, two right, empty backfield for Noah Boris. 
He wears number 12, stands alone on the near side hash mark. Shotgun snap back. He'll roll to his left. He's looking. He's going to swing it out into the hands of Dickman on the left sideline. Got pushed out of bounds about the 26-yard line. Nice gain on first down. Now it'll bring up a short second down for the Eagles. Haven't watched Coach Beatty's offenses for several years now. I wouldn't be surprised that at this point in this drive, they take a shot down the field towards the end zone. It's a good opportunity, good location for it. You're 25, 26 yards from the end zone and a short third down if you if you miss it. One receiver right, two left. Shotgun snap back. Boris is looking at the end zone. He's got to throw it up to Dickman right side. Wide open. Touchdown, Eagles. And Kelly called it. You took the shot. A 26-yard touchdown pass all the way in from Noah Boris to Drayton Dickman. And the Eagles waste no time getting on the board. I'm just going to stop. You can mute me for the rest of the game because that's as good as it's going to get. Dave, come to the booth. <laughs> Kelly to the camera and a switch. Now for the D-Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt. Aaron Guzman on to attempt it. The holder is Noah Boris. Boris readies for the snap. It's back. The hold is down. The kick is up. And the extra point is good. The Eagles take a lead 7-0 on their first possession of the ball game with 10-12 left in quarter number one. Quick timeout. Back with more Eagle football on SHN in just a moment. The first quarter of tonight's game is sponsored by Fine Line General Contractor. At Fine Line General Contractor, we are dedicated to meeting and exceeding our clients' expectations in Central Texas. Fine Line offers a wide variety of construction services, including budgeting, design assistance, scheduling, project management, and more. Fine Line General Contractor, committed to building excellence and relationships. Visit our website at finelinegc.com. The Georgetown Eagles put up seven on their first drive. The Georgetown Eagle Football Booster Club scoring drive summary. Kelly, five plays, 65 yards, a minute and 39 seconds off the clock. Capped off by the 26-yard touchdown pass from Noah Boris to Drayden Dickman. When we talked about those four gentlemen, Noah, Andrew, Drayden, and Marquise, and they were keys on that drive. Noah did a good job spreading that ball around, running that offense, and, man, that was exactly what the doctor and, ordered. And stop right there. That offensive line controlled that line of scrimmage. Yes, that, sir. That they, I think they came out on a mission. After talking to Gegelman last night, I think they came out ready to punch somebody in the nose, and they started it off with possession number one. That's going to be some biscuits and gravy worthy there for those big boys. The Syntex shirts and embroidery kickoff. Guzman boots it, filled it at the 10-yard line, far sideline. Comes back towards the middle of the field, up past the 20. Makes a man miss, 25-30, and then wrapped up back by at the 30-yard line. Nice return there for the Hawks by number six. That'll be Brian Ray, and the Hawks will take over. First and 10 at their own 30-yard line with 10.04 left here in quarter number one. Now we see how determined this defense is to make a statement because they, um, the offense made their statement to start with. Now it's time for the defense to make a, a quick statement. And we'll see how they respond here. you got Obina and uh, the big man in the middle, number 99, Michael Valenta. Pressure applied. Rodriguez swings it out. Catch made about the 36-yard line. Receiver falls forward past the 40 up to the 41 for a first down. Hey, we got a fella named Jordan Vieira uh, listening in tonight. I, it sounds like a some state championship baseball it coach I've, I've heard of. Who can't field. <laughs> <laughs> first and 10 for the Hawks at their own 41-yard line. Rodriguez shotgun. He's got a receiver left, two receivers right on the near side hash. Tight end in motion to the right side. Running back in the backfield, they'll hand it off to number 24. The right side hit quickly. No, the quarterback pulled it and kept it up uh, himself. Came back to the left side, gets up to the 45, a gain of four, brings up second and six. Nice pull there by Rodriguez. Pulled a lot of players. The running back got, uh, paid the price on that one, though. Michael Valenta did a good job of holding on to his block, and then when the running back came through, he thought he had the ball, and he instantly swept with that right hand, like trying to knock the ball out but then realized he didn't have the ball and came in and helped tackle the quarterback. Rodriguez, quick pass, and he's overthrown as the receiver gets knocked down. That was overthrown there. Tried to have a, a kind of a quick end there, and that pass incomplete for Rodriguez, and that'll bring up third and six now for the Hawks at their own 45-yard line. So here's a big opportunity right here on the first drive, first opportunity for the defense to hold the offense, get off the field, get the ball back to the, deep, to the Georgetown offense. Big statement right here on this down. Rodriguez and the Hawks huddle up back about the 40-yard line. They're at the near side hash mark. Two receivers right, one left. The running back offset to the left side of Rodriguez in the backfield. Shotgun snap comes back. 
He steps back two steps. He's going to throw it downfield. And the catch, see if it was made or knocked free. And it is called incomplete. What a job there by the Eagle defender. Number nine, Gabriel Denova reaches in and knocks it away. And that brings up fourth down. Good stop there. Now we see if they punt. Boy, there's so many teams going for it on fourth downs in some locations you used to never see teams go for it on fourth down, but it looks like Hendrickson's thinking about going for it right here. I don't know that you want to give Georgetown this short of a field after that first drive they had, but I guess if you're Hendrickson, you got to take some chances. you got nothing to lose. Two receivers right, one left. The running back directly behind the quarterback, Rodriguez, in the backfield. Shotgun snap comes back. Turn around, hand it off, and he's hit immediately. Michael Valenza, <laughs> and that went nowhere but backwards. A loss of one on the play. They give him the 44-yard line, and that's a turnover on downs. What a hit by the big man, Valenta. Nice job by Michael Valenta just flying in, shedding his block like it didn't exist, making the stop. And the Eagles have the ball with a short field now. So I'm thinking here comes another heavy dose of the double deuce. Two big plays on the defensive side there. The de defensive back, number nine, Gabriel Denova, he makes the breakup on third down, and then Michael Valento, the big hit of the running back in the backfield for one-yard loss, turnover on downs. Eagle offense has it with 8.57 left first quarter. First and 10 at the Hawk 44-yard line. Snap back to Boris, fakes the handoff. He rolls to the right. He's looking downfield, and he has a man. Catch made at the 30-yard line, taken out of bounds is Drayden Dickman. That's the target right now between Boris and Dickman all the way down to the 28-yard line of uh, Hendrickson, and that'll be another borrow for Morrow first down. Nice play call, nice play design. You've got two routes coming across the middle of the field. you got one going deep on the left side, one going deep on the right side, so Noah has a lot of opportunities. And you've got Andrew Petter just hanging out in the flat waiting in case his quarterback gets into trouble, but he's clean so far. Two receivers left, one right. Petter offside to the left of Boris. Hand off to Petter. He cuts it back towards the middle. He's hit, but carries a couple of men forward up to the 32-yard line. Or make it, I'm sorry, the 27-yard line. So a gain of one. It'll bring up second and nine for the Eagles. Safety came flying in from deep at the snap of the ball, and he was headed directly for Petter. Had him kind of in the backfield, I thought, maybe for a loss, but he was able to gain a little bit. But a nice job by the safety of coming in and putting Andrew on the ground. Three receivers left, two right. Now Petter in motion from the right side into the backfield, left side of Boris. Near side hash, shotgun snap back. Quick wide receiver screen to the left side. Dominguez makes the catch up past the 20, up to the 19-yard line, and that'll be inside the Smoothie King red zone with a short third and one now for this Eagle offense. I like the play calls. I like the play design, spreading it around, not letting Hendrickson get too comfortable with anything. Kind of got their defense on their heels right now. This is when you got to pour it on, put this ball in the end zone. I don't think you're going to see that deep shot right now. I think you're going to see a couple of runs to get this first down. Second and one from the 19 inside the Smoothie King red zone. Now two diff, uh, running backs in the backfield offset either side of Petter. Petter's going to keep it right up the middle, and he's knocked down about the 16-yard line, maybe the 17. We'll see where they spot him. And that will be another borrow for Morrow first down for the Eagles. I would love to see a play with Michael Valenta in the backfield as a fullback blocking. That would be awesome. They're going to mark him at the 17-yard line, so a gain of two gives him the first down and 10. It's kind of like what we saw out of uh, Joey Lightfoot, the big offensive yes. lineman uh, for our defensive lineman for uh, uh, A&M. Now one receiver left. Petter to the right side. He'll take the handoff. Left side doesn't get touched. Has the 10. The 5 drags two tacklers into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgetown. Yes, sir. Andrew Petter found a hole, and he hit it quickly and didn't get hit until about the 5-yard line, Kelly. And then two Hawks defenders rode on his back into that end zone. Did you notice, Wally, when he got that ball and he was rolling out to the left side, he was looking, am I going to go outside, am I going to go inside? Tight end made the good block on that kick out, and it left out that, that middle part of the field open for him to get in the end zone. Great blocking by the line and the receivers. G-Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt is up and good by Aaron Guzman. And the Eagles with 7.02 left in the first quarter have a 14-0 lead over the Hendricks Hawks. Quick timeout, back with more Eagle football and SHN in a moment. First down sponsor this season is Borrow From Morrow. Borrow From Morrow, our team is dedicated to providing the best mortgage experience possible. 
We do that by offering easy-to-use mortgage tools, including our handy mobile app, competitive rates, and assistance from experienced loan officers. Our loan officers understand the local markets, have access to a wide variety of loan programs, and are ready to guide you through the process. Your family, your future, our focus. For your mortgage needs, remember Matt Morrow. Borrow from Morrow. For more information, visit borrowfrommorrow.com. NMLS 464148. Back here in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth, brought to you by JMT's. The Georgetown Eagle Football Booster Club scoring drive summary. Five plays, 44 yards, a minute and 55 seconds off the clock. Capped off by a 17-yard a touchdown run by Andrew Petter. The Eagles lead it 14 to nothing over the Hawks here early in the first quarter. And uh, the Syntex shirts and embroidery kickoff about to be brought to you by Aaron Guzman. He approaches and puts it away. It's kicked towards the left side. It'll be filled at about the eight-yard line. He'll come back towards the middle of the field. Has a gap there, but it closes quickly and taken down short of the 25. A good job of maintaining those spaces on the kickoff, Kelly. And the Eagles stop the return man at the 24-yard line. And that's where the Hawks take over, first and 10. I was watching the lanes. Make sure guys are staying in their lanes. They did a great job because he was looking to bounce it over to the left side of the field over here towards the press box, but... That was blocked up, and the only hope he had was the middle of the field, but that was taken care of. Three receivers left, one right for the Hawks. They'll start on the far side hash mark. Rodriguez, shotgun snap back. Pressure right away. A throw across the middle, and he overthrows the receiver, and that'll be incomplete for a second down now for the Hawks. Just a bit high, just off the fingertips of the receiver and the Eagles. The defense, you, you know that, that that momentum has to be in their blood, ready to go again and get that ball back to this offense that's on fire. And you saw him getting into the backfield very quickly, and the quarterback wants a little, needs another half a second to a second for that play to develop like he wants it to, and he just didn't have the time. Rodriguez in the shotgun. He's got a receiver right and two left. Tight end moves to the left side, running back directly behind him. Shotgun snap back to Rodriguez. He'll hand it off right up the middle. The running back skips outside, now back inside, and that's where he's stacked up by about nine silver helmets. He gets up to about the 29-yard line. It'll be getting a five and bring up a third and five now for the Hawks. The left side of the Hawks offensive line was able to win that line of scrimmage on that play, but everything else closed up so fast because the linebackers came in, the cornerbacks came in and shut it down. There was an opening there, but it didn't stay there very long. So it was a great job of everybody doing what they're supposed to do and, and getting to that football, getting silver hats around that football. One, one receiver right, two left. Shotgun snap back to Rodriguez. He's looking left. He's looking to go, and now he's pressured, and he's going to have to run. Up past the 25-30. He'll get up to the 35 and slide down, and then a, a hit comes in. No flags come in. He's, they were headed down to the ground when he slid last second. But he got enough yardage. Good job there by Rodriguez to escape pressure and pick up a first down for the Hawks up to the 20 or 36 yard line. Lucky there wasn't a flag there. I thought that I thought that side judge was going to throw one. Snap back to Rod or direct snap to the running back, and he's ahead up to about the 39 yard line. Gain of three brings up second and seven. 5:45 left in the first quarter. Hawks trying to put a drive together here, up to their 39 yard line. Second and seven. The running back in the offense for the Hawks right now, Carson Workman, and he's getting a load of the carries, the junior running back. Two receivers left now, one right. Rodriguez, center of the field. He'll take the shotgun snap with Workman on his left side. Ball back. He'll put it in the hands of Workman. He's up past the 40, but taken down at the 42-yard line, a gain of three, and that'll bring up a third and manageable here, about a third and four now for the Hawks. You can tell the Hendrickson coaching staff watched that film from last week of us against A&M Consolidated because Consolidated had a lot of success right at the middle of our defense, and that's where they're attacking in that running game right now. And the defensive line, Obina and Valenta stepping up there, clogging up that middle. Valenta with a big hit on the fourth down attempt in the last drive. They close it up quickly. Shotgun snap back to Rodriguez. Quick pass to the outside, and the catch made. A quick tackle there by Leo Diaz on the slant. 
But enough for another Henderson Hawk first down up to the 49-yard line. It's a good thing Leo hung on to that shoulder pad because he was gone had he not made that tackle. The gain of seven moves it up to the 49-yard line, and they did throw a flag there. Face mask. So they called a they did call a face mask on Leo. So a big 15-yard penalty tacked onto the end of the play. So that'll take it into Georgetown territory up to the 36-yard line. First and 10. Coach Nicky calling some blitzes, some run blitzes on this. I like it. Henderson's just done a good job of fighting those off and moving the ball down the field. But uh, I hope they keep keeping that, bringing that pressure on because that offensive line is going to get tired. Now we'll have two receivers left, one right for the Hawks as they are in Georgetown territory for the first time of the ball game. In the backfield, the shotgun snap goes back. It's not Rodriguez. He'll hand it off to, no, he keeps it, pulls it out of the belly, breaks the tackle up to about the 30-yard line where he's taken down there. And now a late flag comes in. Some late activity going on between number 70 of the Hawks and I think Landry Leggett for the Eagles. Yeah, we just see who they saw committing the atrocity. They called a face mask on Landry Leggett, who wasn't even near the play. He was back, unless they, unless he was some, someone else was back there with him, but two back-to-back 15-yard -back penalties and another first down for the Hawks, now inside the red zone at the 15-yard line of Georgetown. Let's just take a tip to pick six back. Snap back to Rodriguez, little swing pass out to the flat to Workman. He's up past the 15 and now pushed out of bounds just inside the 10 at the eight yard line. So a gain of seven brings up a second and three for the Hawks. Courtney Dawson, number 25, just had, I think it was Cohen Whitman just wrapped up, kept him wrapped up even after the play was over. Second and three from the eight yard line. Handed off to Workman, right side, slips the tackle, bottled up, comes back inside, gets about two yards. He'll be up to the six yard line and that'll bring up third and one now for the Hawks. Hendrickson's done a good job on the play calls on this drive and, and we've seen that. They've been able to take advantage of what the defense has given them. They've, the defense has put some pressure in there but they it hasn't hurt Hendrickson on this drive. Rodriguez goes forward on the quarterback keeper. He'll get the first down, down to the three-yard line. A lot of after-whistle activity going on between these two teams. I'm surprised no more flags are coming in, Kelly. And it'll be a first and goal for the Hawks. Well, and you saw the advantage right there of that under the center. We talked about it last week on some short yardage plays for Georgetown. The quarterback doesn't have to run up three yards just to get back to the line of scrimmage when he's under center like that. And you just saw it right there. You saw the quarterback put his foot back. And when I saw that foot back, I'm thinking he's going right up the middle, and he did. First and goal for the Hawks. 3-10 left here in the first quarter. The Hawks trying to respond with some points on the board. First and goal from the three, handed off to Workman up the middle. Runs over a defender, but quickly stacked up and driven back a gain of one. Brings up second and goal from the two-yard line. Big, big collision right there, right at the point of attack. Him and Landry Leggett met head up. And that's the first time I've seen Landry kind of go a little bit backwards, but he was able to right the ship and wait for some help to come there. And they swarmed to the football, put him on the ground. Second and goal. The offensive lineman, number 67, comes back in the ball game for the Hawks. That'll be Cash Debert. He had to leave for a play with a helmet coming off in the middle of the play, the last play. He's now back on. The Hawks have it. Second and goal from the two yard line. One receiver right, one left. Direct snap to Workman. A little jump pass in the middle, and Aww. that's broken up, but a flag comes in from the back line judge before there. the ball ever hit the ground. Don't call pass interference. Got to be within a five-yard window, though. That ball, kind of a weird play there. So we'll see what they call. They call holding on the defense, so that'll go to the one-yard line, and it'll be first and goal now for the Hawks. the one yard line. 12 play of the drive for the Hawks. Two minutes, two minutes, 20 seconds left. Direct snap, Workman, he takes it right up the middle and he's into the end zone for the Hendrickson touchdown. 
2.16 left first quarter. Henderson puts their first points up, Kelly. A touchdown run by Workman for one yard. And they'll take a chance here at the extra point to cut the lead in half for the Georgetown Eagles. Nice drive by the Hawks. And again, they, they took advantage of what Georgetown was giving them, even when some pressure was applied. So it'll be kind of interesting to see if they fake that pressure later on and drop those guys back in those situations. But nice drive by Hendrickson. I, I tell you what, it's a 76-yard drive as the extra point is up and good for the Hawks. So with 2.16 left in the first quarter, 14 to seven year score, Georgetown leads it. But Kelly, you talk about it, 76 yard drive with 30 yards of penalties on the 31 yards of penalties on the Eagles. That, that cuts that down to a 45 yard drive for the Hawks. Not much work having to be done when you're giving them that many free yards. Well, and you look at when a couple of those penalties happen, we may be at a point where we, we can hold, but you know, third down and long turns into first and 10 and penalties man just killers on that drive so you got to get that fixed four minutes 39 seconds on the drive to go those 76 yards and they did it in 12 plays cut the lead back to seven now Georgetown will get the kickoff for their third possession of the ball game here in the first quarter 216 remaining 14 to 7 your score quarter number one brought to you by fine line construction Kelly I tell you what, we, we talk about our, our, our sponsors over and over, but it, it's amazing the way they've come through to, to bring this and allow us to bring these uh, games to you free of charge on the SHN network. And we thank each and every one of them for all they do to support these kids and athletes at Georgetown High School. Just such great support. It helps us have families from all over the country that can watch these kids play. And sometimes it's people that have no idea who these teams are just tuning in to, to, to watch. We had somebody on the chat a little bit earlier asking, is this varsity, is this sub-varsity? And uh, you are watching Texas high school varsity football on SHN Sports. Lugerville having to split the nights on their stadium. They have one stadium for four teams in the school district. Uh, someone plays on Thursday and one on Friday. The kickoff to the near side. It's fielded on a fall down by the up man. That was by Weston Bruce. And he catches it over the shoulder. Petter was coming forward, but Bruce takes it. Falls down at the 15 yard line. So the Eagles find themselves in their back of their own end of the field. First and 10 from the 15. If you're not the last guy on the kickoff return team and the ball goes over your head, let it go. <laughs> But this just gives us an opportunity for an 85-yard scoring drive. Morris will be in the backfield. At the quarterback position, Petter directly behind him. One receiver right, one left. Now Petter moves left side, near side hash mark. And now Dax uh, Weisheimer will move to the left side. Pitch to Petter to the left side. He makes two men miss, cuts up the middle, past the 15, all the way up to the 20. A nice run. What a job there, a patient running by Petter to get five on first down. Need some butter and some maple syrup because there were some pancakes on that play. A couple of guys on the offensive line just buried their defenders, and that's what you like to see. Control that line of scrimmage. Andrew Petter going to work here tonight. Second and five now from the 20-yard line, middle of the field. Offset to the left side of Boris in the backfield. One receiver right, one left. Quick out to Dickman on the right side. He catches it at 24, spins out 25, 30, and taken down out of bounds about the 31-yard line. A borrow from Morrow, first down on the connection from Boris to Dickman. The corners are playing man-to-man -man out there on the edges, and you see the threat that Drayden is right there because they're having to play so far off of him because if he gets behind you, he's gone. And I think that's what they're looking for. If they get tight coverage, you're going to see a one-on-one -on -one down the sideline and take a shot with the arm of Noah Boris. Two receivers left, one right for the Eagles. Near side hash mark, Boris has Petter to his left. Shotgun snap back, fake the handoff. Quick out all the way to the left side, caught at the 30 and pushed out of bounds. Let's see where they spot him at the 34. It'll be a gain to three, bring up second and seven. A minute and a half left here in quarter number one. You'd like for that football to get there about a half a second faster, but it's a positive gain, so we'll take it. Weston Bruce, Marquise Dominguez, the two receivers right. Dickman, the lone receiver left. Petter in the backfield, left side of Boris. Far side hash mark, second and seven. Snap back to Boris. Boris is looking deep. He's going to have to get rid of it. It does, but it's going to be dropped. Oh, an interception was ready in the hands of the defensive back for the Hendrickson Hawks. Who was that on the route? I, I couldn't tell. But it, it, it kind of got delayed. Boris held it longer than he wanted to. But luckily, number 11, Tony Brown, 
dropped the ball on the interception for the Hawks, so the Eagles live again. Third and seven here with 124 left. Weisheimer was out there. He didn't see the ball coming. He didn't think it was coming to him. Now Boris has two receivers right, one left, two left, one right. Guy jumps at the line, they don't get it off. Now a pass out to Dickman right side, up to the 44 yard line, and that's enough for another borrow from Morrow first down. The Boris to Dickman connection is on fire tonight, Kelly. Dance with who brung you, you know? And you can rely on Dickman, you can rely on Dominguez, you can rely on Petter, just keep riding those horses. Now uh, Dickman will flip to the left side, Boris and or Marquise Dominguez and Weston Bruce flip to the right side. One receiver left, two right. Petter in the backfield directly behind Boris. On the near side hash mark, now Petter moves up to the right side of Boris. Shotgun snap will come back to him. He'll hand it off to Petter. Petter hitting the backfield, but still drives forward. He gets a yard. He was hit three yards deep, Kelly, but yet drags the tackler forward and gets a positive one yard out of it. Second and nine. Two guys hit him. You know it's coming. You know he's getting the football. You just got to be happy with stopping him for a short game. One minute left here in the first quarter. Eagles driving their third possession of the ball game. 14 to seven, the Eagles lead it over the Hawks of Hendrickson High School. First, second and nine from the 45. Dickman, the lone receiver right, Dominguez and Bruce, the two receivers to the left side. Boris in the backfield, Petter to his left. Fake the handoff, Boris looks out, throws it out to the left side. Weston Bruce makes it, breaks the tackle, 50, 45, drops it, but the ball goes out of bounds. Ooh. He was free range running and the ball came out. But luckily for the Eagles, it goes out of bounds. Coach Griffin kind of giving him a little, hey, hey, let's hold on to the ball there. <laughs> Careful with that butter and, and, and serve. Oh, I yeah. tell you what. That's for the linemen. Oh, oh my goodness. Tomorrow, tomorrow, first down into Hawk territory. What a catch by Bruce. He made a couple men miss and then dropped the ball. It went out of bounds. The Eagles have it first and 10 at the 42 of Hendrickson. Folks, our crowd mic is right here by the band, so. Make the handoff to Petter. Boris drops back, and he's taking the deep shot. And they're going to tackle Drayden Dickman. That's a smart play. It's either a touchdown or 15-yard penalty, and they'll take it every time. 15-yard penalty flag there on the Hawks, and that'll be another first down. Yeah, Drayden got mauled on that one. That's because he, he had beat that cornerback bad, and that's all you can do. That's one of those penalties that – you're not okay if, if you're the Hendrickson coaches, you're not okay with your guy getting beat, but you're okay with him taking that step to avoid that automatic touchdown. Maddox Quiller wrapped up Dickman about the 10 yard line. That ball was on the way. That's a 15 yard penalty on the defensive pass interference. So it'll be another borrow for Morrow first down. For the Eagles, they'll go inside the 30 yard line down to the 27 of Hendrickson. Another first and 10 with 13 seconds left here in the first quarter. On the football field, that's a smart play. On the street, that's aggravated assault. <laughs> <laughs> Two receivers right, one left, snap back. Handed off to Petter, left side. Gets through a hole, punches a man down, a stiff arm. Down the sideline, Petter goes 15, 10, five, touchdown! Georgetown Eagles, Petter breaks the tackles, gets outside, and then the speed gets turned on, and Petter takes it to the house. Every carry increases membership in the Petterhead Fan Club. Pre-order, <laughs> your shirts now. Oh man, I love watching that kid run the football. Those stiff arms are just wicked. Three seconds remaining in the quarter as we get ready for the G-Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt. Guzman back, to, ready for the attempt. Boris will take the snap, put it down at the 10 yard line. The extra point attempt is up and it is good. And your Eagles take a 21 to seven lead over to Hendrickson Hawks with three seconds left in the first quarter. Quick timeout, more Eagle football after this. The first quarter of tonight's game is sponsored by Fine Line General Contractor. At Fine Line General Contractor, we are dedicated to meeting and exceeding our clients' expectations in Central Texas. Fine Line offers a wide variety of construction services, including budgeting, design assistance, scheduling, project management, and more. Fine Line General Contractor, committed to building excellence and relationships. Visit our website at finelinegc.com. Back here in the JCT Memorial broadcast booth, the Eagles lead it 21 to seven. 
over the Hendrickson Hawks with three seconds left as we get ready for the Syntex Syntex shirt and embroidery kickoff. Guzman drops back. I was looking for who was that. I thought it was someone <laughs> different than Aaron Guzman. Andrew Petter Kelly, 75 rushing yards in the first quarter, more than he had last game against AM Consolidated. Yeah, and he he's running the ball well. He's the the offensive line though is what's the, is the difference. They're able to open holes this week, and Andrew's waiting for those holes to open, bouncing through those holes, and three possessions, three touchdowns. A Syntex shirt and embroidery kickoff. With three seconds left in the quarter, Guzman back, and he's ready to put it into play, and he'll boot it away far side. It'll be fielded this time shorter at the 15-yard line. Here comes a return man, cuts it back to the middle of the field, and he'll be popped just before the 30-yard line and fall forward. And the Hawks will take over first and 10 at their own 31-yard line when the second quarter comes to play. Quick timeout, 21-7. Georgetown leads it over Hendrickson after quarter number one. More Eagle football on SHN after this. Our first down sponsor this season is Borrow from Morrow. Borrow from Morrow, our team is dedicated to providing the best mortgage experience possible. We do that by offering easy to use mortgage tools, including our handy mobile app, competitive rates, and assistance from experienced loan officers. Our loan officers understand the local markets, have access to a wide variety of loan programs, and are ready to guide you through the process. Your family, your future, our focus. For your mortgage needs, remember Matt Morrow, Borrow from Morrow. For more information, visit borrowfrommorrow.com. NMLS 464148. Back inside the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth, brought to you by JMTs.com. Go visit them there, JMTs.com. Omar and Susie Tonkins. Proud sponsors of the broadcast booth here for SHN Sports this football season. The Georgetown Eagle Football Booster Club scoring drive summary. It seems to be on a repeat tonight. The Eagles go eight plays, 85 yards, two minutes and 11 seconds, capped off by the Andrew Petter 27-yard touchdown run. And now Hendrickson takes over first and 10 to start quarter number two from their own 31-yard line. Hendrickson's got to be aware of the fact that they can't have very many, if any more, drives that come up with no points. So I think they're going to continue to be aggressive, try to take advantage of the, the pressure that Georgetown is putting on, which is going to reduce the number of defenders in the backfield. One receiver right, two left for the Hawks. Rodriguez has a running back directly behind him in the shotgun. Turn around, hand it off to Workman up the middle, makes a man miss, cuts back, gets up to about a 34-yard line, and he'll be taken down there. Gain of three, brings up second and seven. The tackle made there looked like Landry Leggett or in Lewis. That'll be in Lewis on that tackle. There's been a couple of missed tackles tonight, but the difference tonight is there are more hats around the football. And if, he's, if the running back or the receiver slips off of somebody, well, there's two more guys there to take him to the ground, so it's not as costly as it was last week. Two receivers left, one right. Workman offset to the left of Rodriguez. Shotgun back. Fake the handoff. Rodriguez looks to pass, and it's going to be picked off. Eagles got it in first turnover of the ball game, and it is signaled interception. Who got it? Is it Thomas Scholes again? It is it Thomas sure is. Scholes. That's his third interception of the season, I believe. And the Eagle defense makes a stand here, and they get the ball back for their offense. First and 10 at the 45 of Hendrickson, the first turn of the ball game, and the Eagles look to capitalize early, Kelly. Thomas Scholes, one of those names that we don't really talk a lot about, but he has quietly been a really effective defender for these Eagles, and you, you love seeing that from these kids that are getting to play this year, and Thomas has done a great job. 11.25 left second quarter. Eagles have it in Hawks territory, first and 10. Boris looks back, and now he's going to send one over into Dickman 40 at the 35, and he goes forward, fights all the way down to the 31. That's a borrow for Morrow first down. And what a weird play there. Dickman turned quickly and then took off down the line. Boris hit him in stride. Nice pickup on first down. It's a good thing. that We're, we're sitting next to the Hendrickson coaches, and it's a good thing our microphones don't pick up what's going on in that booth because – they're not happy right now. Three receivers right, one left. Petter in the backfield, offset to the left of Boris, near side hash mark. Boris will take the snap back. He looks back quickly, swings it out, but that one's going to be short, and I tell you what, number three did a great job of reading it there. That's Daniel Pena, and kind of glad that ball ended up short. Yeah. And Pena may have had a pick six there if that one's in the air. Well, uh, and that, it, Is that a flag on the field? 
I heard whistles and a man running in. It is pass interference whistled on the Hawks. Well, the so problem the problem is that pass is behind the line of scrimmage. Not a not a backwards pass, but it's behind the line. Yeah, that's the right call. Yes. No flag on the play. Yeah, the throw is behind the line of scrimmage. It's a forward pass, but it's behind the line of scrimmage, so the pass interference rules don't count. Just like the, the receiver out there that's blocking, as long as the pass is behind the line of scrimmage, you can have that contact. So with that pass right there, that's the only disadvantage is they try to have that receiver out there blocking, and he can be in contact, so that's the right call. Now they're going to – no, they're not going to talk again. They huddled up. Coach Griffin was uh, trying to argue a point that the pass interference occurred past the line of scrimmage, not at the point of the pass. But it's going to be second and ten after the incomplete pass from the 31 of Hendrickson. Three receivers left. Petter to the left of Boris in the backfield. Handed off. Petter right side, 30, 25. Shifts out to the outside and gets all the way up to the 22-yard line and gain a nine. And that will bring up third and one for the Eagles. I don't know who that cornerback was out there. I think it was Daniel Pena. Pena. And quick handoff, Petter, right side, stacked up, but he moves forward. Got a shove there from behind. A little help on the right side, and that gets the Eagles. Another borrow from Morrow first down inside the Smoothie King red zone. Not sure who jumped in and pushed forward, but did a great job there to help Petter out. I think it was Weisheimer. Big number 66 came rolling in there and pushing people from behind. And getting that pile moving forward. Maybe 65, Broden Elliott. Oh, it'll be a first and 10, but there's a penalty. Didn't see the signal, so that'll. Oh. Now they're going to spot it. There we go. So it's going to be first and 10. A borrow from our first down inside the Smoothie King red zone at the 17-yard line. Andrew Petter continues to control the ground game for the Eagles. Three receivers now left side. Boris will back up at the shotgun. Petter in the backfield. He'll be off to the left side of Boris. Far side hash mark. Snap back. But now here goes Dickman in motion to the right side. Hand it off. Petter, he cuts back up the middle. 15-10. And he's going to be tackled right at the, look like at the first down marker, but he gets spotted forward. And it's going to be a first and goal. Another borrow for Morrow first down for the Eagles at the six-yard line. It kind of goes unnoticed, but those jump cuts like that take so much strength. Quickly back to the line, handed off to Petter. Keeps it right up the middle, drives past the five, up to the goal line, but just short. Andrew Petter fell forward, lands about six inches short of the goal line, and that'll be second to goal. Eagles quickly back to the line. From the one-yard line, Boris gets the snap back, hands it to Petter, and he dives forward, reaches it out. What a play there. Andrew Petter got to get tackled about the one-yard line and reaches out before he hits the ground. Ball across the line, touchdown, Georgetown. What a great drive, and that was an Andrew Petter drive. A couple of passes here and there, but Andrew got the bulk of the work and just made it count. My goodness. A one-yard touchdown run for Petter brings about the G-Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt by Aaron Guzman, an opportunity to make it 28-7 for the Eagles. Boris ready for the snap. The ball back, the hold is down, the kick is away, and it is good. The Eagles lead it 28-7. Over the Henderson Hawks with 9.48 left in the first half. Unofficially, of course, 101 yards. For Andrew and Petter. touchdowns. In a quarter Jeez. in about two and a half minutes. More Eagle football after this on SHN. Construction software options can be extreme and pricey. Introducing Works, a simple and affordable solution for small to medium-sized subcontractors. With features like estimates, progress billing, and change orders, you can easily track project changes in one seamless workflow, all while integrating with the accounting software you're already working in. Works was built by subcontractors for subcontractors. Finally, that tool that meets construction management and accounting needs without the overkill. Syntex shirt and embroidery kickoff being brought to you here with 9.48 left in the second quarter. Kelly, you were talking about Andrew Petter as we went to the break. His unofficial stat total, 101 yards, three TDs here in a quarter and about two and a half minutes. 
uh, a little bit different outlook for this Eagle offense tonight. They they are uh, just taking over. And you cannot take your foot off the brake, off the gas. You got to keep pushing forward. Put your foot on these guys' necks, and finish this. The Georgetown Eagle Football Booster Club scoring drive summary: six plays, 45 yards, a minute and 37 seconds, capped off with a one-yard Andrew Petter touchdown run. Guzman kicks it off near side, and he scorches this one, but it's going to land at the three-yard line, out of bounds. And just toss that little flag down there. And so the Hawks will have it at the 30-yard line, first and 10, after the kickoff out of bounds, trailing by 21. Well, and this energizes your defense as well because the offense is doing so well. You had one drive where you gave up a long drive. Some penalties helped with that, but it was a long drive by Hendrickson to get their lone touchdown so far in the game. And now you've got your defense doing this well. Your your defense your, your offense doing this well. Your defensive line is rested. Your defenders are rested, and they're excited, ready to get back on the field. And uh, we're re kicking. They're, yeah, they're going to decline or take the penalty. They don't want it at the thirty. They want Guzman to kick it off again because this end uh, from South and North actually has the wind a little bit with him. Yeah. So Hendrickson going to take the opportunity for a kickoff again. And so the Syntex shirt and embroidery kickoff brought to you. Aaron Guzman drops back. 9.48 left here in the first half. The second quarter brought to you by Works. And Guzman approaches, and he'll kick it off. And uh, he'll boot it high and deep, filled it at the seven-yard line. Up to the 15, 20, 25, finds a hole, 30, 35. And finally taken down just shy of the 40-yard line. A good choice by Hendrickson. They're going to get an extra 10 yards out of it. I'm not sure how that line judge spots it at the 40 when he was standing at the 10, but he has good eyesight. The guy got up at the 39-yard line with the ball in his hand. <laughs> but it's first and 10, and so that penalty does cost the Eagles 10, 10 at yards. It's 941 left in the quarter at the 40-yard line, first and 10 for Hendrickson. Rodriguez shot bat, shotgun snap, swings it out to the right side, oh. almost picked off in Lewis. He read that one. The linebacker had the bottom side of the coverage there. Leo Diaz is over the top. That pass sells just over the head of outstretched arms in Lewis. And incomplete out of bounds. Second and 10 now for the Hawks. Ian's going to catch a little flack on that one during <laughs> film study. <laughs> Two receivers left, one right. Workman in the backfield behind Rodriguez. Shotgun snap back. He drops back three yards. He's looking to scramble, and he's going to have to. Being chased by Leggett up past the 45, and what a shoestring tackle by Landry Leggett. He laid out and tripped Rodriguez, and that brought him down short of the first down. That'll bring up a third and three for the Hawks at the 47. You see Landry's athleticism. That's why he's in the middle of the field at that linebacker position because he's got good range and can get out there and stop those runs like that. Third and three at the 47. Rodriguez hands it off to Workman. Ahead, hit, stopped short of the first down. What a job. Is that Valenta again? Looks like. Big 99 right there, and he gets some help there. I think it's by Stovall Hawkins. They're going quick. And back to the line quickly. It's going to be fourth and two for the Hawks. They snap it back, give it to Workman right up the middle, oh. and he's going to break a tackle and get past the midfield down to the 45 before he's taken down. And the Hawks, Stovall Hawkins got drugged there, couldn't get any help. And Workman kind of just drags him with him a little bit and gets him down to the 45, make it the 44-yard line. So Hendrickson picks up another first down. I thought they had it stopped, but the running back did a good job of keeping those legs driving and got forward for the first down. First and, town into, first and 10 into Georgetown territory at the 44-yard line. Two receivers left, one right. Rodriguez has Workman to his left in the backfield. Shotgun snap back. Rodriguez looks left, and now he's going to be pressured and run. He breaks a tackle and then gets popped. <laughs> what a job. Jacob Faltasek laying the wood on the quarterback, Rodriguez. And now a whistle yes. blown. I don't see a flag on the ground. But what a job. What a hit by... Jacob Faltasek, Rodriguez thought he had some room to run, and Faltasek closed that door pretty quickly. Just a short gain right now. As it stands, it'll be about a two-yard gain for the Hawks. The sideline warning is one of the referees. Ran into somebody on the Hawks' sideline, so they get their only warning of the sideline violation. So it does bring up second and eight. 
and pointing at one of the camera people, I guess one of the photographers on the sideline, which you're responsible for the people on your sideline, so they don't have to be a part of the team. Second and eight. 8-16 left here in the second quarter. Hawks have it at the 42-yard line of Georgetown. Back to Rodriguez, quick pass to the outside, caught by number 10. He shook Diaz there at the 30, up past the 25, past the 20, into the red zone territory. And go the Hawks down to the 19-yard line. What a move there by number 10, Spencer DiStefano. And that breaks up a big first down for the Hawks inside the red zone, first and 10 at the 19. Two receivers right, two left. Workman in the backfield, directly behind Rodriguez. Shotgun snap back. Rodriguez, backside pressure, frontside pressure, sack. He's going down. Give it Daniel Obina, help finish it up. Let's see who was right in the middle of that one for the Eagles. That'll be number 15. What, what a play there. Omarion Lucas. Got in on the sack there, and Obina came in to help him out. And now that'll bring up a second and 15 back to the 20 or the, to the 26 yard line. Rodriguez back again. The little screen read out, snuff, and the ball's out. No incomplete pass. Oh, what a play! They read it. Rodriguez took a, a shot there. I think Leggett laid that one on him. He got blasted. He threw that screen and paid for it. It was incomplete. So the Hawks will have it third and 15 now. Boy, I like, the, I like the continued pressure. Hendrickson has had some success against that pressure, but now you see that pressure starting to take its toll. That's two plays in a row where the pressure has affected the play before it ever could develop. Third and 16 from the 25, back to Rodriguez. A quick screen right out front. Obina lays out, tries to get him, and then he's stacked up. A receiver bottled up at about the 18, make it the 17-yard line. So a gain of eight there, but that'll bring up fourth and eight for the Hawks. Doesn't look like a field goal crew coming on. Daniel Obina started trucking down that field when he saw that completion go over his shoulder, and he's like, I don't think so. So fourth and eight from the 17-yard line. Got to get down to the nine-yard line for a first down. The Hawks are going to go for it here with 6.40 left in the second quarter. I think they're going to let this play clock run down, take a timeout, regroup because this is an important drive for Hendricks and they have got to have some points right now. And there's the first time out called by coach Doug Pierce of the Hawks and we'll take it with them. 627 left in the second quarter, 28 to seven, the Hawks trail your Georgetown Eagles by 21. Back with more Eagle football in just a moment. The Smoothie King Red Zone is sponsored by Smoothie King of Georgetown. It's our commitment to blend a more nutritious smoothie from bottom of the cup up. It's your choice, same flavor, zero compromises. Smoothie King at Wolf Ranch, blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Smoothie King is located at Wolf Ranch Town Center, 1003 West University, Suite 110 in Georgetown, Texas.
So the Hawks score on the two down, two yard touchdown run by Rodriguez. The extra point attempt blocked, so the lead stays at 15 for the Eagles, 28 to 13. 6.15 left in the second quarter. And I tell you what, Kelly, some penalties are just really what is giving this Hawk offense more and more momentum. That's three pass or three personal fouls, 45 yards on those three flags alone that have gone on the way of the Hawk offense. And again, that last one was on a fourth down four down attempt and, and it wasn't really necessary. I don't think the ball was catchable, but it's those little mistakes that give Hendrickson some opportunities to put some points on the board and you let him think you can hang around. It's what I was saying a little bit earlier. You got to put your foot on their neck and close these guys out. So an 11 play 60 yard drive. The Hawks cut it down to 15 now, 28 to 13. Your Eagles lead it and they'll get the ball back here with plenty of time to do some damage again. Here we get close to that eight minute middle of the ball game that Coach Griffin likes to focus on the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. The Eagles, the Hawks are gonna get the ball to start the second half, so the Eagles wanna take control here and put it in the end zone. The kickoff, a high one and short to the left side. Fielded, dropped at the 12, picked up again, up past the 20, make a man miss, 25, 30, now off to the races down the far sideline. The kicker to beat, he hurdled him, what a play. <laughs> he hurdled the kicker, the kicker gets one hand on the foot, and into Hawk territory go the Eagles to start this possession, but one of the Hawk defenders is down. See, he is looks to be writhing in pain. But what a return, I think that was Andrew Petter that tried to go Leaping over the kicker. What a return from the 12-yard line to the 48 of Hendrickson. It'll be first and 10 with 6.07 left here in the first half. We'll have to mute that mic. We've got some fans standing right beside the field mic. Hey, mute me. I'll go take care of it. So now the player down on the far side as Hendrickson comes to their sideline. The Eagles will have the ball. First and 10 at the 48-yard line of Hendrickson. Number five. Down for the Hawks. He's still down with medical attention being paid to him. Why he's down, let's go to commercial. We'll be back with more Eagle football after this on SHN. The JCT Broadcast Booth is sponsored by JMT's in Round Rock. JMT's provides customized apparel and promotional items to small businesses, schools, and nonprofit organizations. Our services include screen printing, embroidery, and promotional items. Our game changing direct to film printing allows JMT's to print full color graphics on your garments. JMT's has the experience and confidence to take on any order. Visit our website at jmts.com or call us at 512-388-5555. The Georgetown Eagles take over first and 10 at the 48 of Hendrickson. 6.07 left in the second quarter. Two running backs in the backfield. Keeping it, Boris throws it down the middle, wide open, 20-yard line, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Georgetown. Drayden Dickman takes the pass about the 20-yard line, and Boris, man, he laid that one out <laughs> just over the defensive back into the hands of Dickman in full stride, and you're not going to catch him at that point. It's a touchdown. Eagles lead it 34-13. The G-Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt 
Uh, wait, Aaron Guzman, Noah Boris will hold. What a play there. A one play, 48 yard strike from Boris to Dickman. Snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is away, and Guzman knocks it through. 35 to 13. The Eagles take a big lead back over the Hawks in a one play drive, thanks to a great return off of the bobbled <laughs> kickoff right. and then a run back to the 48-yard line of Hendrickson. Well, and that you you see these Hendrickson kids coming off the field, that just sucked the wind right out of their sails. They had they had a little bit of momentum going with the touchdown. They they cut the lead in half, cut it down to a four-point lead, and then on one play, after a good kick return, like you said, one play, now they're back down 20, 22 points. The Georgetown Eagle football booster club scoring drive summary. And one this play, will be quick. <laughs> one play, nine <laughs> seconds, 48 yards, Boris to Dickman, touchdown. The end. And uh, and if you'll check, Kelly, check with uh, Holden, our statistician. Drake Dickman's got to be up there in yards so far here in the ball game tonight. Uh, he's done a great job, and Noah Boris has got it to him. They got it. They, they seem to be clicking on all levels tonight, and that one none prettier. As he uh, Boris just threw a great ball right there. And it right into the hands of Dickman in full stride, and he took it the rest of the way for the touchdown. Yeah, Drayden struggling tonight. Eight catches, 135 yards, th two touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> Rough night for yeah. the senior uh, commit to Rice University. You hope he can shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, Noah Boris, uh, you, we kept talking about this arm, doing a great job of reading yeah. it there. He took that ball out of the stomach of Fetter and laid out a beautiful pass for Drayden Dickman. He ran under it and took it to the house. And who was it that told us about that arm? Uh, Tucker Griffin. Tucker Griffin. The Syntex shirts and embroidery kickoff awaits here. Aaron Guzman back. He's ready to go, and he'll boot it away near side. It's going to be fielded at the 8-yard line. Dropped. Now picked up. 10-yard line. 15. Runs into some traffic. Up past the 20. 25 and taken ball down. Came out. Oh, I thought the ball came out. Got right back on it yeah. if it did. Number 28 there on the return. That will be Nadrian Miller, he gets it up to the 29-yard line. But a player down for the Hendrickson Hawks. We'll check on that player. He is down on the near side 30-yard line. The Hawks will have it, 549 left here in the first half. 35 to 13, the Eagles lead it by 22. The Hawks have it first and 10 at their own 29-yard line. Two kickoffs in a row, one for the Eagles and one for the Hawks. Kelly, the the kick receiver, not able to hold on to it. And this player is still down. Let's take another commercial break. We'll be back with more Eagle football on SHN. Construction software options can be extreme and pricey. Introducing Works, a simple and affordable solution for small to medium-sized subcontractors. With features like estimates, progress billing, and change orders, you can easily track project changes in one seamless workflow, all while integrating with the accounting software you're already working in. Works was built by subcontractors for subcontractors. Finally, that tool that meets construction management and accounting needs without the overkill. Back here in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth, 
Number 14, Jeremy Harris. He is walking off with some assistance from the training staff. We hope he is all right. Man, I hate seeing these kids get hurt. Damo Cuckoo was the other player hurt, and it looked like he was putting no weight on that left leg. Oh, hopefully he will be all right as well. Drayton Dickman having a game, best game of the year so far, through uh, about a quarter and a half. Well over 100, what is it, 135 yards on the night, two TDs on eight catches. Hawks have the ball, first and 10 at their own 29-yard line, 549 left here, second quarter, brought to you by Works. Two receivers left, one right. Rodriguez, screen, screen pass, caught, but dr oh, he dropped the ball. And uh, I think the defense, Obina, backed up. He was ready to take the, the receiver down. It would have only went for about a yard or two, uh, but it's incomplete, and that'll bring up second and ten. Nice job by the defense on that play, Col collapsing things before they can get broken up. And they're doing better now recognizing what's happening and attacking the football. And, and – Hendrickson was able to take advantage of the, the, the aggression and over, over aggression of the Eagles. Now they've kind of, they're, they're still putting some pressure out there, but a little more controlled. Rodriguez is going to throw it up near side. Catch made up at the 44 yard line. Hit immediately and taken down there by Gabriel DeNova. That'll be enough for a first down. Nice catch by Courtney Dawson, number 25. Senior wide receiver out there. He knew he was going to get popped, but he hung on to the football. It was a nice catch. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. Three receivers left, one right. Rodriguez drops back. He's looking right. He's going to heave one up, and he's going to float it down the field, but it's out of bounds, and they threw the flag anyway. They're going to call pass interference on the Eagles. The ball is not catchable, so I'm not sure if they'll stick with it, but they will. They're going to call it on Leo Diaz. That ball was out of bounds, not even playable by the receiver. But Diaz and the receiver kind of both back and forth hand checking. Yeah. And they're going to call it on Leo, so that'll be a 15-yard penalty, the fourth of the first half for the Eagles. I'm just wondering if they were calling it because Leo pushed him out of bounds because they were both hand checking. First and 10, Rodriguez rolls to his left. He's going to throw it, and it's going to be tipped and incomplete just over and behind the receiver. So that'll bring up second and 10 as Rodriguez is running to the left on that rollout. See big Daniel Obina just rumbling out there chasing that quarterback down. Make you nervous. Oh, I don't man. care who you are. I'd run too. Georgetown defense now having to defend their own half of the field as Hendrickson has it second and 10 from the Georgetown 41 yard line. Two receivers left, two right. Rodriguez hands it to Workman up the middle, bounces off a man, but then Obina grabs him from behind and they'll take him down. A gain of about three up to the 38 yard line. That'll bring up third and seven. It's about the fifth or sixth snap that's been low. It's like they've been having some problems with that snap. Timeout whistled here. Another player down for the Hawks. I think that's a cramp. Player sitting at the 40-yard line. So the Eagles take advantage of it and go up and huddle on the far sideline. And I agree with you, Kelly. You, you hate to see these players down. You hope they're not hurt bad. Uh, you, you, these student athletes, of all the work they do year in and year out, and, and putting it out here. And, and, and that's going to be Workman. Running back for the Hawks down. He gets up with a little bit of assistance, but he's going to walk off under his own power. He's a, had a good first half for the Hawks in the backfield, the junior running back. Carson Workman, so he'll make his way off the field. Hawks will have it third and seven from the 38-yard line of Georgetown. I know this Eagle team would love to get the ball back. Ball 4.59 left here in the work second quarter based on demonstrated behavior in this game so far, you know this is two down territory for Hendrickson right now, but this is a big series for them because they get the ball back again to start the second half. Rodriguez, two receivers left, two right. He looks left, quick pass out, and a quick tackle made there by Leo Diaz. It's gonna be short of the, fourth, uh, the, uh, the first down into the 34 yard line of Georgetown. So it's gonna be fourth and three. 
big fourth down. For the Hawks, fourth and three. They've got to get to the 31 of Georgetown for the first down. Number 27, Jalen West comes out. Number 26, correction, 28, and Adrian Miller comes in in the backfield with Workman out of the ball game right now. Two receivers left, two right for the Hawks. They're on the far side hash mark. Rodriguez looking to his left, pressure applied. He's going to float it out oh. and a perfect flow pass. And he gets it into the hands of Miller down the sideline for a first down inside the red zone. The linebacker just a shade too inside, and that ball floated perfectly by Rodriguez. What a beautiful passing catch on a fourth down. Another conversion for the Hawks, and they have it first and 10 at the 19. Jacob Fault to Zach read that pass just a little bit wrong. Just over his hands into the hands of Miller. Two receivers right, two left. Miller directly behind Rodriguez in the backfield. First and 10 from the 19. Backside pressure. They just miss on the sack. He scrambles, throws it out, but it's incomplete. And Rodriguez may not get back up. Daniel Obina took Rodriguez down, and he's holding his ankle and writhing in pain. Mm, mm, mm. Rodriguez now rolls over on his back. Two defenders just missed on the sack. Rodriguez squirts out, but then he gets hit as he held onto it and then floated it out to the, the receiver coming across the field and incomplete. Rodriguez came up limp, holding his ankle. Well, let's take a quick timeout as they tend to Rodriguez on the field. 3.48 left in the first half. Eagles lead it 35-13. More Eagle football after this. The Smoothie King Red Zone is sponsored by Smoothie King of Georgetown. It's our commitment to blend a more nutritious smoothie from bottom of the cup up. It's your choice, same flavor, zero compromises. Smoothie King at Wolf Ranch, blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Smoothie King is located at Wolf Ranch Town Center, 1003 West University, Suite 110 in Georgetown, Texas. Back here live in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth. The Hawks will have a new quarterback at the helm. Is that Keontae Fowler? Looks like number 18. Keontae Fowler in a quarterback. Second and 10 from the 19. He'll scramble out to the right side, and he's going to be not sacked, but the pass is going to be incomplete. Landry Leggett threw him to the ground as he just gets out of, gets the pass away, but it's behind the receiver and incomplete. And that'll bring up third and 10 now for the Hawks. Kind of interesting with Fowler coming in on his first play as a quarterback to roll him out and start looking for receivers down there. But Georgetown put some pressure back in there and didn't let him stay back in the pocket and find an open receiver. So a third and 10 from the 19. Two receivers left, two right. Fowler at the helm has the running back off to his right side. Pressure being applied right up the middle. And now Fowler's going to run with it up the middle. And he gets up past the 15 to about the 10-yard line. He's taken down there just short of a first down. And that will bring up fourth and one from the 10-yard line. And now another player on the ground for the Hawks. Oh, my. I think it's Fowler. Three twenty-nine left here in the half. Another Hawk player down on the ground. Nice run there by the backup, Keontae Fowler. He got down to the 10-yard line on the quarterback keeper. Brings up a fourth and one. But another player down for the Hawks. Sits up at about the nine-yard line. It's right in the spot where Fowler was taken down. And now another quarterback warming up for the Hawks. We'll see who they're going to go with here. So you have two guys warming up, throwing back and forth. One is Brian Ray. The other is Clint Smith. So we'll see who takes the next snap for the Hawks. Rodriguez is out. And now Fowler being helped off, not putting much weight on that leg. It looks like he hurt an ankle or a knee, Kelly. And the injury is mm. really piling up here for the Hawks. You just hate seeing that. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, you couldn't see what happened to him. 
But it looks like Clint Smith is going to come in. Clint Smith, the junior, typically wide receiver and defensive back. He's going to come in as the third quarterback here for the Hawks. Yeah, he doesn't even have quarterback listed Listen, in his position. Yeah, I tell you what, I think he's got a plethora of letters out there that we can't see on that roster because that's a, this is the third different position I've seen him in. Clint's parents, his dad, Nelson Smith, a friend of mine. So got to be excited here. <laughs> Clint getting forced into action at the quarterback spot. scared to death. <laughs> So Clint will run the offense, fourth and one for the Hawks at the 10-yard line. An opportunity for a first down inside the, the 10 for the Hawks so they can get to the nine-yard line. Snap back, hand it off to the running back right in the middle. The pile stacks up. They drive him back, but see where they spot him. He got it. It's going to be enough for a first down. Number Big number 44, Braxton Brown, was in to carry that, the junior running back, and he plows forward to enough to get the first down. It'll be first and goal at the nine-yard line. First and goal at the nine-yard line for the Hawks. Braxton Brown got the first down on the carry there. This works second quarter has been a little bit slower than the first quarter. A little bit slower. 2.50 left on the clock as it continues to run. Lots of changes being made as they break the huddle. Ten seconds left on the down clock. Smith in the backfield. Two receivers right, one left. Miller, the running back behind Smith in the shotgun. Now off to the left side of Smith. Shotgun snap back. Smith will hand it off to Miller. He's hitting the backfield, breaks the tackle, but stacked up there, and he goes backwards. And it'll be no gain. That'll bring up second and goal at the nine-yard line. Good stand there by the Eagle defensive line. That'll be a timeout by the Eagles. Coach wanted to Want try to stop back. this, get the ball back, and try to put some more points on the board before halftime. Let's take a quick timeout. Back with more Eagle football on SHN. Fourth quarter sponsor for this season is Minuteman Press Georgetown. Minuteman Press Georgetown is your one-stop print shop. From business cards to signage and now turnkey mailing solutions for flyers, postcards, bulk mailing, and more. Minuteman Press Georgetown can help bring exposure to your business. For more information, visit mmptx.com. Back here live at the JCT Memorial Broadcast Booth, brought to you by JMTs. JMTs provides customized apparel and promotional items to small businesses, schools, and nonprofits. JMTs.com. Second and goal from the nine yard line. Clint Smith, the quarterback now. He looks back to pass, throws it up to the left corner of the end zone. The ball is up, and it is no good as it hits the ground. And that'll bring up third and goal. Good defense there by the Eagles. I believe that was Leo Diaz back in that far corner, Kelly. And now a tough third and goal for the uh, Hawks. There was some hand checking going on, and with the way they've been throwing those flags on that pass interference, I thought they may throw another one there, but they let that go. 2.19 left here in the second quarter. The Hawks, if you're just joining us, on their third quarterback of the night, Rodriguez, and then Keontae Fowler, the backup, went in. A three plays, and then he got hurt. And now Clint Smith, the third quarterback in for the Hawks, has it third and goal at the nine-yard line. Miller in motion to the left side. Shotgun snap back. Smith looks back. He's trying to throw it up in the end zone, and he does. And that will fall incomplete as double coverage had that receiver well covered. And a flag comes in in the end zone. So we'll see what this flag is. Can only assume it's going to be defensive holding or defensive pass interference. They are throwing that like I've never seen before. Their arms are going to be more tired than the starting pitcher for the Georgetown Eagles. And that's going to bring up a first and goal. Boy, I don't know what they called. First and goal at the two-yard line for the Hawks. Coach... Uh, Griffin will take his second time out. 2-12 left here in the second quarter. 35-13. Georgetown leads it by 22 over the Hendrickson Hawks. They have it first to go at the two-yard line. Kelly, some 
Uh, you know, what What have we seen here a lot in the first quarter, uh, first half, this offense going to work, but this defense, flashes of greatness and, and tackling yep. and, 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 and stopping things, uh, but a lot of penalties in this half, and not saying they're all good calls, but a couple of face masks back-to-back. -back. Now three pass interference calls back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, here in this half. And, and a lot of yellow flags, and they're all coming, it seems, the way of the Georgetown Eagles. Both of the touchdowns that Hendrickson has scored were a result of some penalties that were called on Georgetown. If they can put the ball in here, it's another one. So the points that Hendrickson is getting, they're taking advantage of the calls against Georgetown. They're taking advantage of the mistakes that Georgetown's making and hanging around in this game. 76-yard drive earlier. Ac accelerated by 31 yards of penalties by the Eagles. Now they have it first and goal at the two-yard line. Smith in, direct snap to the running back. He piles for it, runs into the pile, and gets nowhere. Driven back, he'll get up to the one-yard line where they'll spot him. And that'll bring up second and goal now. I'm leaning with that defense, trying to help them. Second and goal from the one, back under... Back to the line, direct snap, up ahead again. And stacked up, and they're going to give him progress into the end zone. And that'll be a touchdown for Hendrickson. Workman back in the game. I just heard that name called. So the running back, the starting running back, number 24, Workman, gets into the end zone, a one-yard touchdown run for the Hawks. And 147 left in the half. It's 35-19 to 19 now. As the extra point attempt about to be attempted by the Hawks. Now Clint Smith, the placeholder for the <laughs> field goal team. Snap back. The hold is down. The kick is away, and it is good. And the ball game now a 15-point lead for the Eagles, 35-20 to 20 over the Hawks. Penalties, the story of this first half for this Eagle defense. I went back and watched a little bit, and uh, it was kind of a generous forward progress for that touchdown. A six, or let's see here, a 71-yard drive for the Hawks, and they took a lot of time off the clock, well, just over four minutes. So the Eagles will have a, a time to do the two-minute drill here in the last four minutes of this half. They get the ball back just under two minutes, where in that area. Coach Griffin wants to win that battle. Put some points on the board, come out, get a stop in the second half, and score again. And so an opportunity here for this offense to get going again as they already have put 35 points up here in the first half, and now an opportunity to go and get some more. So it just gives us an opportunity for a good return here, and then a one-minute 40. By the time the kick's done, about 143, 142. So a four-play minute and 40-second touchdown drive. How about that? Well, that would be nice. That would be. Hawks get ready to kick it off. Drayton Dickman back on the near side at the 10-yard line. Andrew Petter on the far side at the 10-yard line. The kick is away. High pooch kick down in the middle of the field. Petter catches at the 19. Up past the 25. Makes a man miss. Finds a hole. 35, 30, 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, and falls forward. And there's the big kickoff return you called there. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> Kelly called it there. The Eagles get a great return. Andrew Petter, man, he's doing some work in the backfield. The running back, he's had two big returns. Almost hurtled the kicker earlier. And now the Eagles have it with a minute 37 left into Hawk territory at the 41. So let's make it three plays. Minute 35 second drive. I don't think they can take that long. <laughs> oh, they don't have to. <laughs> they start at the 41 of Hendrickson first and 10. Three receivers left, one right. Boris has Petter offset to his left side in the backfield. Five, far side hash mark. Snap back to Boris. Swing pass out to Petter in the left side. Up past the 45-40. Has blockers, 35-30. He slows down. <laughs> oh, stiff arms the man out of the way and then taken out of or taken down. They're gonna read they're gonna say he's in bounds on the tackle inside the 25. <laughs> Petter did not run out of bounds. He stopped stiff arm and threw a player down and kept going. Gets down to the 23-yard line. First and 10, a borrow from Morrow, first down. Quickly back to the line. Shotgun snap. Boris left side into the hands of Dickman, but he's out of bounds, hit out of bounds. No flag there. He Not to Dickman. That was to Weston Bruce. What a play there by Bruce. He got clobbered out of bounds. The whistle had blown, and he got hit out of bounds. No whistle, no flag thrown. That'll bring up second and seven for the Eagles from the 20. So 
Snap back to Boris. He looks left. He's going to throw it left. Has a man open. 15-yard line out of bounds is Marquise Dominguez. And that will bring up a short third down and two from the 15 inside the Smoothie King red zone. Smoothie King blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Smoothie King at Wolf Ranch. Visit them tomorrow. Sounds good for a nice smoothie mm. from our friends at Smoothie King. Third and two from the 15-yard line. Boris in the shotgun. Petter on his right side. Fake the handoff. Boris keeps it up the middle. 15-10. He's tripped up, bring it, brought down at the nine-yard line. And that's where the Eagles will have it. First and goal at the nine. Nice job. Nice play calls. Not getting in a big hurry, but using a little bit of tempo. Nice little drive going. There's a lot of band in the end zone. <laughs> Careful, Stanford. <laughs> Careful. Yeah. And that will be the first time out whistled here. That's our second timeout. So Hendricks will take a timeout. 53 seconds to go. Eagles have it first and goal at the nine-yard line. This offense not wasting any time. They have things going, clicking. Noah Boris looking good. Quick passes to Weston Bruce. A swing pass to Petter. And Petter just uh, treating people rudely running down that near sideline. Yeah, and this is a big opportunity for Hendrickson. If they can keep Georgetown out of the end zone, get the ball back, This, this you know, we're talking a 14-point swing like that but they're gonna have a hard time keeping them out from nine yards out so they're gonna have to try to force a turnover somehow some way do something to keep Georgetown out of the end zone the last update we had the Bengals leading the Dolphins seven to three seven to six now but now Tua Tungavalua is out for the Dolphins see who they go to is Ryan Fitzpatrick still there <laughs> uh, yeah. the Dolphins uh, one of the undefeated I, I think surprise teams this year in the yeah. NFL uh, on a tear and now in a battle with the Bengals on Thursday night football I tried to get two on my fantasy team last week but nobody had him and somebody picked him up before I got him so that's good, good. first and goal at the nine Boris in the backfield and that'll be a false start whistled on better as he rocked forward can't get the flag. Oh, there we go. Just dump it beside the leg. We all know it's a false start. <laughs> he couldn't get the, pop, the flag of his pocket. That'll be a false start, and that'll be first and goal from the 14-yard line now after the penalty. Come on, Andy. All start on the Eagles. Another penalty here in the first half for the Eagles. First and goal from the 14. Boris gets a shotgun snap back. He's looking right side. He's going to throw it up to the corner, and it's underthrown. Incomplete just in front of Drayden Dickman. Noah's been really good on those timing routes and putting that ball at a spot. That was just a long throw from yeah. the near side hash all the way to the far side corner of the end zone. It comes up just short. Now it brings up second and goal from the 19 or the 14-yard line. Only the third incomplete pass for Boris this half, I believe. Oh, having a great first half as well. Two receivers left, two right. Petter to the left of Boris in the backfield. Shotgun snap back, but now here's the whistle. And it'll be a timeout called by Hendrickson. <laughs> this is obviously a defensive coach sitting next to me. That'll be the third time out of the half for the Hendrickson Hawks. They take it just before the snap. So when we come back, the Eagles will have it with 46 seconds left. Second to goal from their own 14-yard line. Back with more Eagle football in just a moment. Construction software options can be extreme and pricey. Introducing Works, a simple and affordable solution for small to medium-sized subcontractors. With features like estimates, progress billing, and change orders, you can easily track project changes in one seamless workflow, all while integrating with the accounting software you're already working in. Works was built by subcontractors for subcontractors. Finally, that tool that meets construction management and accounting needs without the overkill. Back at the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth, brought to you by JMT's. Second and goal from the 14-yard line. The Eagles will have it. Two receivers left, two right. Petter in the backfield behind Boris. Now offset to Boris's left side. Near side hash mark. 
Noah will get the shotgun snap. He stands at the 19, dropping back, looking at the end zone. The in route, but it was deflected off the official and caught. <laughs> Marquise Dominguez, that's good. The official is yeah, in play. He is. Oh, no. Another player hurt. Marquise Dominguez gets the touchdown pass. Number 44 is down for the Hawks. Braxton Brown. What a play. It looked like that ball either got tipped or it came off of Boris's hand wrong. Bo uh, Noah's hand wrong. It hit the official in the middle of the field off his back. And Marquise Dominguez catches it off the deflection in the end zone for a touchdown. That's a... Uh a relatively new. You don't see that every day. And that is, it's a live ball. The officials are in play. No, it didn't come off his hand weird. He just didn't make a good throw, and it bounced off the right shoulder of the referee. So in baseball, that would be like one, four, eight on the putout. <laughs> and there it's quarterback, referee, receiver for the touchdown. So Noah Borsch gets the assist from the back judge. And Marquise Dominguez into the end zone, a 14-yard touchdown <laughs> reception. But now Braxton Brown, another player down for this Hawk team. Hopefully he is all right as he lays about the 22-yard line. 39 seconds remaining. The Eagles score, go up 21 again, pending the extra point attempt. They're going to help Braxton Brown up. And he's going to need some assistance leaving the field as he comes up kind of gimpy. The G-Town Lumber and Supply Extra Point Attempt. 9400 Brown Lane in Austin, Texas. Hometown service like none other. Go visit them. G-Town Lumber and Supply.com. Proud sponsors of your Georgetown Eagles and SHN Sports. They bring you the G-Town Lumber and Supply Extra Point Attempt. Aaron Guzman on to attempt the kick. Noah Boris. Set to hold. The shotgun snap is back. Boris puts it down. The kick is away. And it is good. The Eagles lead it 42 to 20 with 39 seconds left. They did not even take a minute off the clock, Kelly. Well, you said it shouldn't take that long, and it didn't. <laughs> 58 seconds and a total of six plays. The Eagles doing work again here in quarter number two. 42 to 20, and the Eagles doing what, what coach likes to live by. Try to score last in the half, and then come out and make a stand and get the first points of the second half and win that middle eight. So they'll get ready to kick it off again. Eagles are going to eagle. Whatever that means. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who's 42 to, to 20, this offense clicking again tonight. Andrew Petter run the ball well. Drayden Dickman, uh, well over 100 yards receiving. Uh, Marquise Dominguez, what a job there to stay with the, the route mm -hmm. and to follow the ball as it hit the referee. First time I've ever seen that calling a game uh, that it came off the official and then caught in the end zone for a touchdown. But yeah. the Eagles, the beneficiary there to get back their 22-point lead over the Hawks as Aaron Guzman tees up the ball, getting ready for the Syntex shirt and embroidery kickoff. Caller stop by 1911 North Austin Avenue in Georgetown, www.syntexshirt.com. Eagles will kick it away one last time here in the half. Guzman ready. He'll approach it and put it in the air. A squibber bounces at the 28, fielded at about the 13-yard line. Up past the 20, gets a block up to the 25, cut, makes a man miss. 30 up to the 34. And taken down there, number 16 on the return. That's Lord Middlebrooks. Right we're, in the, we were waiting for that name. Yeah. Right in the middle of that return, Seth Warren had a defender behind him, <laughs> wrapped his hands around his waist and was keeping him from advancing down the field. And Seth was getting a little irritated by that. Folks, we do want to let you know, during the Pro Glass Halftime Show, we will show the Georgetown High School Band, and then we will recap – the first half. The Hendrickson Hawks. Sack in the back. No, he got the handoff into the hands of Miller before he got popped by Michael Valenta. 
Clint Smith gets it off to Miller, but he's taken down back at the 29-yard line, a loss of four. 18 seconds remaining in the half, and it's got to click off the clock. I don't think they'll call another play. I think they'll take it to the half. Second and 14 for the Hawks. They're going to get up to the line. Three seconds on the clock. Snap it back. Smith drops back. He's looking long, and he's going to throw it up. And that one is going to be caught and taken down just past midfield. The hit made there by Thomas Scholes. Pass complete to the 48 of Georgetown. And that's how the first half comes to an end. 42 to 20. Georgetown leads it over Hendrickson. Quick timeout. We'll come back with the Pro Glass Halftime Show. The band and the Georgettes perform for you next here on SHN. Halftime shows this season are presented by Pro Glass of Georgetown. If your car, RV, or heavy equipment needs glass to be replaced, Pro Glass can get the job done in no time. Our local, family-owned business stands behind its work with a limited lifetime warranty for as long as you own the car. We are the Central Texas choice for RV, heavy equipment, and auto glass since 1998. Windshield chip repairs in under 30 minutes, no appointment necessary. Visit our website at www.proglasstx.com or call Georgettes get ready to perform. The band are getting ready for their halftime show as well. And so the Georgettes will perform first. We will turn up the crowd mic and let you hear it as best as possible. The camera will show the Georgettes and the band here on the SHN Pro Glass Halftime Show. Enjoy.
award-winning sweethearts of Georgetown, the Georgettes. The Georgette officers are Lieutenant Reese Bradford, First Lieutenant Julia Vickers, and in the center, your 2022-2023 Georgia captain, Miss Hannah George. The Georgia socials are Addison Rodriguez, Abby Tool, and Peyton Peddle. Social butterflies are Jocelyn Taylor. Officer's choice is Shelby Johnson. The Georgia of the week is Mackenzie Fox. And now, watch the Georgia as they perform a kick routine to the immortal theme from Rocky, Don of Flying Eyes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Georgettes are under the direction of Miss Nikki Crosser. As the Eagle Band and Color Guard take the field, they would like to thank our booster club for their countless hours of hard work and tremendous support. The band is led on the field by drum major Sydney Harper, Ben Crowley, and Ian McAllister. Your 2022-2023 Color Guard captain is Maggie Lowe. Lieutenants are Brandon Rice and Abby Zaria. And sergeants are Amelia and Head social officer is Lily Love, and social officers are Mackenzie Slows and Shaylin Walsh. Brass captain head is Diego Soto. Woodman captain head is Ian Morales. Percussion captain head is Adeline Jensen. This week's box construction of the Wolves are in first place. The gold section is the Also Boxes. In second place, the silver section is the Cubas. In third place, the bronze section is We'll now celebrate our members of the week, so please congratulate the Color Guard Officer's Choice, Morgan Clyde. Color Guard Member of the Week is Pat Cargill. Brass Member of the Week is Cesar Vargas. The Woodwind Member of the Week is Aaliyah Thornton. The Battery Member of the Week is Angel Valdez. The Front Ensemble Member of the Week is Tabitha Shen. The Eagle Band Section of the Week is the Euphonium. Finally, our Eagle Band Pairs of the Week are Johnny and Pam Ochoa. The band would like to dedicate tonight's performance to our awesome principal, Mr. Johnson. The Eagle Band wishes the Hendrickson Band success in their fall 22 season. Now please enjoy as the Eagle Band performs a fun and exciting tribute to Alice in Wonderland and the concept of time. This year's field production is called Down the Rabbit Hole. The show takes audiences on a journey to find the right rabbit. Please sit back, relax, and come down. 
halftime shows this season are presented by Pro Glass of Georgetown. If your car, RV, or heavy equipment needs glass to be replaced, Pro Glass can get the job done in no time. Our local, family-owned business stands behind its work with a limited lifetime warranty for as long as you own the car. We are the Central Texas choice for RV, heavy equipment, and auto glass since 1998. Windshield chip repairs in under 30 minutes, no appointment necessary. Visit our website at www.proglasstx.com or call 512-930-1365. We welcome you back to the Pro Glass Halftime Show here at the field in Pflugerville. I'm Kelly Duvall, color analyst. Wally is on a little bit of a break here at the half, but I have with me the Holden Tuma, our statistician. Holden, talk a little bit about what's going on, statistically speaking, in this half. Yeah, so, I mean, if you look at the scoreboard, it's 42-20, but that really doesn't show how dominant the Georgetown Eagles were in this halftime. Every point the Hawks scored in this first half was on drives extended by our own penalties. If you take that out, this could be a shutout. It could be 42 nothing right now if we remove the mental errors. So this has been a entire first half dominated by the Eagles, and obviously the big name coming into this game was Andrew Petter. Uh, averaging 160-something yards, obviously had the bad game against Consolidated, just like 41, which really tanked that average. He's up to 101 yards in this first half and three touchdowns. But... Really, the first half was Noah Boris. He actually passed, he had 18 pass attempts, which was more than Bo uh, Andrew Petter had carries, which is slightly interesting be given that he is a backup quarterback. Right. You'd assume that, okay, Georgetown's going to stick with the run, the run game, but Boris has been lighting it up. He's 15 of 18, so just three inc incomplete passes, 206 yards and three touchdowns, and a perfect passer rating in that first half. So he's been lighting it up and... Uh, the main target, obviously, is the Rice commit, Drayden Dickman. Eight catches, 135 yards, two touchdowns, all of which are season highs in the first half alone. So, I mean, to be fair, like it's, it's just dominance. It's straight-up dominance from Noah Boris, the offensive line, which struggled mightily in that game against Consolidated. They like to stack the box in that game. This game, they're coming out pushing their guys around, giving Petter the space, spreading out the defense, letting Noah Boris take advantage of the open holes. So this is a lot more what you expect from the Georgetown offense. They had a little success in the, in the second half last week, but this is what you expect from the offense. The defense, again, struggling a little bit with penalties and mental mistakes. Yeah, but again, if you take out the penalties and just look at, okay, what else has this defense done today? 62 rushing yards allowed in that first half and just 2.5 yards per carry. Now, generally, an offense wants to function at about four yards a carry. So 2.5 is well below the uh, accepted standards of most offensive coordinators. And obviously, we're by the coach's box. They're definitely not happy about that. But our defensive line is getting all over it. Tons of pressures. Not a lot of sacks because the, the quarterbacks uh, are so mobile at Hendrickson. But they're making them, them run around, making them throw on the run, incomplete passes. Um, the defense has been flying around, and it's been really fun to see. Scholes actually had that interception. He's up to three now in that season. Not a name we call out a lot as, like, the stars of this team, but he's been playing great. So talk about the Hawks' pass game. How successful have they been with the passing game? So, I mean, obviously, they're down to the third-string quarterback. Um, who was it? Uh, number 17, uh, Rodriguez, I think his name was. Uh, he was quick. He had a, a couple good throws, including that fourth down little lob over uh, Faltasek's head to complete it. But I think as of now, they're like 9 of 21 completing passes, well below 50%. Not totally sure on the yards right now, but I don't believe it's over 100. So they're really struggling to get any kind of momentum going. And again, all of their points are really coming off of Georgetown's mental errors. Yeah, and it's the, it's the penalties that have that – have kept their drives alive and, and helped them put points on the board. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we're here at the Pro Glass Halftime Show here at, at the field in Pflugerville. Your halftime score, your Eagles are up 42-20. to 20. What, what are we expecting in the second half with both offenses, really? So, I mean, if I'm Georgetown, given uh, even given how well Boris played, I'm going to feed Andrew Petter. Uh, given we have a 22-point lead, Hendrickson does come out getting with the ball, so we'll need to kind of see, okay, can our defense get a three and out or force a punt, um, and then kind of adjust accordingly, obviously. But 
the ball should be given to Andrew Petter first. Get the clock going. Get him going. He should be over 220, 250 yards by the end of this game if uh, everything goes according to plan. B and, uh, but if you're Hendrickson, you're going to have to th throw the ball. And it's going to be difficult I given that, as of now, they're down to the third string quarterback. We don't know the availability of the first and second guys if they're going to come back. Um, but if not, I mean, they're, they're in a hole. They're if, yeah, if Hendrickson's relegated to the passing game, then Georgetown can pin their ears back and come after. They've done decent – <laughs> covering on the edges, but again, the penalties out there have made a big difference. So if, if Hendrickson's got to come out throwing the ball in the second half, Georgetown's pass game is going to have to improve with those penalties. Yes, exactly. I think uh, we were up to six 15 yard penalties. I think it was four pass interferences, a face mask, and a, maybe two face masks, actually. Um, so obviously that cannot contend you into the second half because that's, again, that's all of uh, Hendrickson's momentum. Right. All of the points is coming off these 15-yard uh, first down guaranteed drive extenders. Uh, you take that out, you pin their ears back. Again, send the pressure because you know they're going to have to pass the ball. Make them uncomfortable. Third string quarterback, he's listed as a receiver, so we don't even know if he's like too deep in the playbook. And Georgetown should have this in the bag. We hope. We hope. Folks, that's Holden Tuma, our statistician. Holden, thanks for the information. We appreciate it. And, folks, stick with us. We're going to take another break here at the Pro Glass Halftime Show. Come back and uh, almost ready for the second half kickoff. So stick with us here on SHN Sports. Our halftime shows this season are presented by Pro Glass of Georgetown. If your car, RV, or heavy equipment needs glass to be replaced, Pro Glass can get the job done in no time. Our local, family-owned business stands behind its work with a limited lifetime warranty for as long as you own the car. We are the Central Texas choice for RV, heavy equipment, and auto glass since 1998. Windshield chip repairs in under 30 minutes, no appointment necessary. Visit our website at www.proglasstx.com or call 512-930-1365.
Grove Glass Plant. Back here in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth, brought to you by JMT's. JMT's provides customized apparel and promotional items to small business, schools, and nonprofits. They have the experience and confidence to take on any orders. JMT's.com. Omar and Susie Tonkins, thank you so much for your sponsorship of the Georgetown Eagle SHN Broadcast booth this season. The JCT Memorial, Jason, Chance, Tonkins, always in our hearts forever. What a half. Six possessions, six touchdowns, six extra points. The Georgetown Eagle offense clicking tonight in this ballgame, Kelly. Yeah, and Holden talked about it at halftime with the, with the statistics. If you look at it on paper, this is out of hand already. So clean up a couple of things, and, and your defense is doing what you want them to do. But – We'll see how the second half plays out now with both teams taking the field. And uh, Georgetown needs to keep their foot on the gas. Let's go back to the eight-minute, eight-middle, the, the middle eight, as Coach Griffin right. calls it. Uh, the Eagles finish the half with the last touchdown. They score uh, with about uh, 35, 39 seconds remaining. Uh, and then uh, Hendrickson runs the clock out. Hendrickson will get the, the ball here to start the second half. One thing this defense has done the last two weeks is held on the first defensive possession of the second half. They've got to continue that momentum here tonight and then just go ahead and put the separation. Hendrickson at a disadvantage. You're at your third-string quarterback. At that point, you know, we were, I ran into a good friend uh, down, uh, down below when we went and made a run, uh, Jason uh, Springfield, and he said, at, at the, when you get to that point in your offense, you put your best athlete back there and let him run the, yeah. the offense. Uh, Clint Smith, uh, the junior wide receiver slash d uh, defensive back, uh, at the helm, I as far as we know, if Rodriguez and Fowler are not back, they both limped off the field with some assistance in the first half. So it'll be interesting to see what the Hawk offense turns to here in the second half to try to make any kind of comeback. This may be a circumstance. Coach Griffin and his staff likes the little trickeration stuff, so – I wouldn't be hugely surprised to see some trick something on this kick to try to keep Hendrickson from having the ball first in the second half. Whether you need one shirt or 100, there's no minimum orders on any custom pieces. Syntex shirt and embroidery brings you the second half kickoff. Al, uh, Aaron Guzman ready to boot it away, and he does. Here to the near side, fielded at the nine-yard line by the Hawks. They'll bring it out past the 10, 15, 20, 25. Cuts back to the outside, past the 30, 35, and drug down out of bounds at about the 42-yard line by number 23 for your Eagles. O.C. Presley on the tackle. Way to run down, hit it out of the angle. Got to use his speed to catch up and take the Hawk return man out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Yard line, and that is where Clint Smith will take over for the Hawk offense as the quarterback here to start the second half. It'll be interesting to see what Hendrickson dials up with this quarterback in there, see if they change their offense up a little bit or keep trying some stuff down the field. First and 10 from their own 42 near side hash mark. Running back at the left side of Smith in the backfield. One receiver right, one left. Snap back, he'll hand it off, and Workman takes it into the line, and he's stacked up there. And he'll be taken down after a gain of about two up to the 44-yard line. That'll bring up second and eight for the Hawks. This is a big, uh, a big first possession in the second half for the for the offense and the defense because Hendrickson has to get some momentum going. They 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 had a little bit at the end of the half, and then Georgetown goes down and scores. Hendrickson needs some momentum, so this is a big drive for them. It's also a big drive for this Georgetown defense to see if they got the mistake short up in the second half that they were having in the first half with the penalties and letting a couple of guys get behind them. Workman on that first carry comes out, lim carry comes out limping here. He was down in the first half, and so back in for one play and now out. Smith, snap was low, and he's going to try to run out from the backfield as the play was busted from the bad snap. And he gets nowhere. He gets taken down for a loss back to the 39-yard line. The sack made there by number 15, Omarion Lucas. Name we've caught a couple of times tonight playing well for this Eagle defense. I noted in the first half they were having some problems with that snap back to the quarterback in shotgun, and that was another low one that, that kept the quarterback from being able to get some momentum going and roll out and try to find an open receiver. Third and 13 for this Hawked offense at their own 39-yard line. Smith has two receivers left. He drops back, looking to pass, looking left side, slings it out there. It's overthrown, 
Nice catch. No, unable to bring it down. Good coverage there by the Eagle defense. The play made there by number 19. That's Colin Casey. He breaks it up, and that'll bring up a fourth down, and this will be something different tonight. A punt Kelly, team. <laughs> Kelly, this is what they call a punt, and we haven't seen this in that ball game from either team. Uh, a lot of times, uh, Hendrickson went for it on fourth down two or three times, and now a punt. Well, I say that. Now they've got someone back in there. Not very deep. We'll see if he backs up to take the punt, and now he will. Back to the 30. On fourth and 13, the snap is back. He'll scramble to the right side. The Australian-style kick bounces at the 22, inside the 20, down to the 10-yard line and killed there at the 8-yard line. So a very effective punt <laughs> yeah. for the Hawks. I was about to say that was more effective than just a little bit because that worked out well for them. So the Eagles will get their first possession of the second half, and Kelly, the defense does what Coach Griffin wants. Yep. He shuts them down in their first drive. Now the offense a chance to go and put the first points of the second half on the board, taking over that middle eight. And this is exactly what the defense needed to do. Uh, uh, of course, it's going to be a little bit easier with a not your starting quarterback in there, but a good stop for the Eagle defense. One receiver left, one right. Petter behind Boris in the backfield. Handed off to Petter right up the middle. 10, 15, splits defenders up past the 20 to the 25-yard line. And that's how you get out of the shadow of your own goalpost on first and 10 from the 8. Take it out to the 25 on an Andrew Petter run. As a, as a defensive coach, you just got to be pulling your teeth out. Every time you see that ball go towards Andrew, you just hold your breath. The borrow from Morrow first down at the 25-yard line. One receiver left, one right. And now the left side of the line. Bruce and Lambright in motion to the right side. Come around, fake the pitch, and now across the middle into the hands of Weston Bruce. He makes the catch, take it down at midfield, a 25-yard gain on first and 10. A nice play there as Bruce came out from the right side after going to, ro to motion to the right end of the line, and he comes back across the field. Beautiful pass from Boris, first down, borrow from Morrow. We have called Weston's name more tonight than I think the previous four weeks, maybe? I think but so. But he's done a great job tonight. First and 10 at the 50-yard line, the midfield stripe, handed off to Petter. Nope, Boris keeps it. Now he's going to roll out, and he's running with it. Up past midfield, gets hit there about the 46-yard line, a gain of four, and that will bring up second and six for the Eagles. Noah, you're not Andrew. <laughs> slide, son, <laughs> slide. <laughs> a nice little keeper there. I thought he was going to hang it out and run it when he rolled to the right side. Boris keeps it, gets a gain of four, and brings up second and six from the 46-yard line. Here for the first possession of the second half for your Eagles. One receiver left, Dickman, the lone receiver right. Dominguez split left side. Petter in the backfield behind Boris. Now Dickman in motion. Shotgun snap back, fake the end around. Hand it to Petter right up the middle. 45-40, splits the fitters, drags him forward. 35 all the way up to the 31-yard line. Another borrow for Morrow first down on a big run by Andrew Petter. Stacking, what, 20-something yards on those two carries on top of what he had in the first half. And Petter's going to patter. Quickly back to the line. Two receivers left and right. Handed off to Petter. Middle makes a man miss. 30, 25. Spins out of a tackle. 20 up into the red zone, into the Smoothie King red zone. Another big run on first down. Down to the 17-yard line goes Andrew Petter. Coach Griffin's on the headset going, if you call anything but a run to Petter, you're fired, Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> first and 10, a borrow from Morrow. First down in inside the Smoothie King red zone. First and 10 at the 17. Dickman split left. He's the lone receiver left, no receivers right. A big line there as Petter stacks up behind Boris in the shotgun. Snap back, fake the hand off to Petter. Boris rolls out a little dump oh, into the nice. flat, into the hands of Weisheimer. He stiff arms a man and gets taken down. Good job tackle there. Weisheimer, though, a big stiff arm from the tight end. Gets it down to the 11-yard line, a gain of about six yards on first down. Brings up a short second and four. That one receiver right, they had the entire offensive line stacked, two tight ends set up in there. And everybody's thinking patter, patter, patter. Well-designed play, hand, fake the handoff, and then you've got one of those tight ends just laying out there in the flat waiting on the pass. They'll mark him down at the 12-yard line. It'll bring up second and five. One receiver right is Dickman, handed off to Petter, goes to the left side. He gets outside the numbers to the 10, the five, and pushed out of bounds short of the goal line. It looks like they'll spot him out at the five-yard line. That's enough for a borrow for Morrow first down, and it's going to be first and goal for your Eagles. Once he got outside the hash marks, there were four black helmets out there just waiting, and it wasn't enough. Back to the line quickly. Here come the Eagles. Boris takes the handoff, gives it to Petter. He cuts back into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. Andrew Petter, what patient running there. 
I'm sorry, how do you pronounce that name again? <laughs> Petter. Uh, Andrew yeah, Petter. Andrew I tell you what, he is doing a job for this Eagle offense tonight. Back to his running ways tonight. As he takes that one in from five yards out, another touchdown for your Eagles. And they lead it now 48 to 20. Waiting for the G-Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt. Noah Bohr sets up at the 10-yard line. He'll take the snap there. Put the hold down for Aaron Guzman. The snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is away. And it is good. And your Eagles lead it 49 to 20. The biggest lead of the ball game for the Eagles. And with seven minutes, 37, 30 seconds left in the third quarter, the Eagles get set to kick it off up by 29. Quick timeout. Back with more Eagle football on SHN. third quarter of tonight's game is brought to you by Nathaniel Funk, your Leander Georgetown Edward Jones financial advisor at 1640 Highland Falls Drive, Suite 801, Leander, Texas 78641. Learn how he can help you with your financial goals. Visit edwardjones.com backslash Nathaniel Funk for more. in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth. The Georgetown Eagle Football Booster Club scoring drive summary. The Eagles take two minutes, 38 seconds off the clock, and they go 92 yards in eight plays, capped off by a five-yard touchdown run by Andrew Petter. And now the Eagles get ready to kick it off. The Syntex shirt and embroidery kickoff. Aaron Guzman will drop back and ready to kick it away to the Hawks for their second possession. So on the night, the Eagles, seven possessions, seven touchdowns as they lead it by 29. The ball put into play by Guzman. It'll be fielded at about the 13-yard line by the Hawks. About past the 15, big block there at the 20. Gets breaks a tackle, 25, 30, 35, and then drag down there by number 88. That'll be Ivan Espinoza on the tackle. And the Hawks will take over their second possession of the second half. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. The Nathaniel Funk, third quarter. Nathaniel Funk brings you Edward Jones, financial office. Nathaniel Funk will be the guest broadcaster next week with Kelly. He'll be the color analyst for Kelly next week as Kelly takes over duties while I'm in the, on the road. And that'll be fun to have Nathaniel back in the booth. Shotgun snap back to Smith. He'll hand it off. Dances to the right side. The running back breaks the tackle. Gets up past or up to the 40. That's where they'll spot him. First and uh, first and 10 in a five-yard gain. That'll be second and five now for the Hawks. Seven minutes left here in the third quarter. Out there on the left edge of the defensive line, the right side of the offensive line, Brandon Stovall is out there working, and they're, they're having to literally hold him to keep him out of that backfield. And it's kind of like we were talking about last week. If it doesn't get called, it's not against the rules. So. Second and five for the Hawks. One receiver left, one right. Clint Smith, the quarterback, the third-string quarterback for the Hawks, into play with two injuries in front of him. He'll take the snap back. It's low. He'll pitch it over to the running back to the right side. He breaks a tackle, gets up past the 40 to about the 42-yard line, a gain of two. That'll bring up third and three now for the Hawks. Despite the penalties that they've had, the defense is doing a much better job this week of pursuing the football. And whenever a tackle is missed, there's guys there to clean it up. I think the coaches are fine with that as long as you've got hats around the ball because the, the, the missed tackles are often because you're being so aggressive and flying to the football and you over-pursue a little bit, but you've got help there, and that's tremendously different this week than it was last week against a very talented, consolidated team. One receiver left, one right. Shotgun snap back to Smith. He looks right, throws it out to the flat, and the ball just underthrown, incomplete. Right at the first down mark, and that'll bring up fourth and three now for the Hawks. The entire Georgetown coaching staff helped that side judge with that <laughs> incomplete pass call. I think H was even out there <laughs> saying no. Fourth and three from the 42-yard line. Snap back to Smith. He's going to look right, throw right, right at the line of scrimmage. Broke it up. What a hit. Leo Diaz. The big hit breaks up the pass, and it's a turnover on downs. Leo making up for some of those first-half penalties. 
uh, that he was whistled for. Not saying they were all earned, but they were called and doing a great job there to break up that first down. Uh, it would have been a first down. And you know that redemption for Leo is nice because we've called Leo's name a couple of times tonight because of those penalties, but that was a great play. Timed it perfectly and was able to break it up. Great job by Leo on that pass. 5.55 left here in quarter number three, and the Eagles have it first and 10 from the 42-yard line of Hendrickson. So good field position for the Eagles. Andrew Petter. Boris in the backfield, two receivers right, one left. Petter to the right side of Boris on the far side hash mark. Now the tight end moves to the right side. Snap back to Boris. He'll pitch it over to Petter right side. He'll cut back in the middle, 40, 35. Cuts it to the outside, 30, 25, and takes a tackler down to the 20-yard line. That's not Petter. Is that Hall you back? Yep. They give it to Hall you back, and Hall you back takes it. What a run there by the speedy <laughs> Hall you back. Yeah. We apologize, Mr. Hall, you back. Very Petter-esque of you down to the 21-yard line. 21-yard <laughs> 20 yard carry on first and 10. A borrow from Morrow first down. Boris gets the shotgun snap. He'll fake the handoff, swing it out to the left side. A little swinging gate play there into the hands of Marquise. He breaks a tackle. He drags the man all the way up to about the 12-yard line. About a yard short of the first down. What a play there. A lot of blocking and movement going on. And Marquise breaks it for nine yards. That'll bring up second and one from the 12. Get, get Cody queued up here for his touchdown he's about to have. One receiver right. That'll be Dickman. One receiver left is Marquise Dominguez. Haul you back in the backfield. Offset to the left side of Boris. Far side hash mark. Shotgun snap will come back to Boris. He'll hand it off to Hall. You back to the right side. He'll string it out wide. He'll make a man miss all the way to the corner, into the end zone. Touchdown, Hall. You back. But a whistle here and a flag thrown. And we'll see what the call is. And that'll be a holding. So that'll bring the touchdown back off the board. Holding on the offense. So that'll back the Eagles up. It was second and one from the 12. And now it'll be second and 11 from the 22 yard line. Thought I had me another prediction. I tell you what, I, I couldn't believe I didn't even want to look at you after that. <laughs> Do you ever want to? <laughs> no. Second 11 from the 22. Face all made you for back, radio. All you back back to the right side of Boris. Now two men move to the left side. One receiver right, one left. Boris gets the snap. Hands it off to Hall Ubeck. Makes a man miss in the backfield. Up past the 20. All the way down to the 15-yard line. Nice run there. By the young running back, Hall Ubeck gets it up to the 15-yard line. A gate of seven, and it brings up a reasonable third down here for the Eagles. I still got him queued up. I still think he's going to put the ball in the end zone. But man, he runs well. Quick. Third and four from the 15-yard line. Hall Ubeck left side of Boris. One receiver right, one left. Fake the handoff, throw it up to the end zone. Marquise will go up, and Marquise will come down. Touchdown, Eagles. Nice. Marquise Domingo is doing what he does best. He goes up and grabs it away from the defender. Put the Hallubeck card away, bring up the Dominguez card, and give him another TD, boys. Marquise Dominguez puts another score on the board for the Eagles. Make it eight possessions, eight touchdowns tonight. Nice catch. I like it. I didn't get my prediction, but that's okay. You had it. Unfortunately, the they called for it. Yeah. G-Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt. Boris gets ready to hold it. He'll put the hold down, the ball down at the 10-yard line. The snap is back. Low snap. Boris gets it ready. Guzman fires the kick away, and it is good. 56 to 20. Now a 36-point lead. The Eagles expand their biggest lead of the ball game, and the offense clicking here. A little different look. Andrew Petter, like we talked about, Holden was talking about at halftime. Hey, feed the ball to Petter, feed the ball to Petter. I think Petter may be done tonight. Yeah. Call you back. Just put some uh, a good show on there. Uh, give him a chance to get some carries. All important. We had Boris come in on an injury against Liberty Hill. Very important to get Call you back some in case anything were to happen to Petter. Yeah, and and you saw right there Noah on that hold. Had a low snap but did a good job of getting that ball down. So the extra point could be good. But Coach likes having these guys be able to get some quality snaps that don't normally get snaps in a close game, and now you've pulled away a little bit. Now you can start getting some of these guys some playing time. And we're only in the third quarter. A minute and 44 seconds on that drive. The Georgetown Eagle Football Booster Club scoring drive summary. That drive went all of four plays, 42 yards. 
in a minute and 44 seconds. Capped off by the 15 yard touchdown pass from Noah Boris to Marquise Dominguez. Very well done. I like the play calling tonight, man. They are just mixing it up. The Coach Beatty has done a good job game planning, game planning for this game, and they have really taken advantage of not having the, the experience on the Hendrickson side of the defense. And they've done a great job, put up a lot of yards. It's exactly what they needed this week. Guzman gets ready to kick away the Syntex shirt and embroidery kickoff. And he'll pooch it, near side kick. Filled it at the 35 on a fair catch and the Hendrickson Hawks were ready there. The up man made the catch and the Hawks take over. First and 10, we'll see where they spot him. It looks like it'll be about the 38 yard line. Smart of that kid not to let that ball bounce because if it does, he's going to get absolutely blasted. So first and 10 at their own 38-yard line. 4-10 left here in the third quarter. Brought to you by Nathaniel Funk and Edward Jones. Here's my hope for the rest of the second half that the hay band that's coming, you know it's coming, isn't too loud. Snap back to Smith. It's low. He picks it up. He pump fakes, and now he's going to throw it long, but the receiver's a miscommunication there is number 47 for the Eagles. That's Jude Greco. He dumps Smith on his back backside as he threw it up, a pump and go, and the two receivers didn't go. And that falls incomplete. Second and 10 now for the Hawks. It was a pump and stay. <laughs> <laughs> pump and hang out for a little bit. Pump and, whoa, where'd that go? Where'd yeah. that go? Pump and, hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> Two receivers both bottled up right there and then looked at each other kind of like, hey, I think one of us was supposed to go yeah. out. And now the Hawks have it at their own 38, second and 10. One receiver left, one right. Running back offset to the left of Smith in the backfield. Snap, handed off to the right side. Comes back to the right, taken down just past the 40. He'll get up to the 42-yard line. That'll be a gain of four. And that'll bring up third and six now for the Hawks. Ian Lewis coming in, making another stop out there. Ian's played a really good game as well, so... We, we're calling some names that we haven't called a lot, but these guys are stepping up tonight. Just fun to fun to watch them play. Getting back into the flow of it and making plays uh, like we come to expect. Running back in the backfield for the Hawks is number 28. That is the Nadrian Miller. Third and six, handed off to Miller. He cuts back to the left side, and he bottles up, breaks a tackle, but he's taken down. At the 46-yard line, that'll be short of the first down. That'll bring up a fourth and three now, fourth and two for the Hawks. He stood straight up and wound up getting tackled by the thoracic cavity. <laughs> Just buried him. And it looks like the Hawks are going to punt this one away again. Sit at their 46-yard line, fourth and two. Would you put any money on that? No. No. Not here. It was a delayed call. As the clock ticks under the 245 mark in the third quarter. But uh, Coach Griffin didn't like what he saw, and he'll take the first time out of the half, wow. and we'll take it with him. 56 to 20. Georgetown leads it over Hendrickson. Quick timeout back with more Eagle football on SHN. Extra points and field goals this season are brought to you by G Town Lumber and Supply. G Town Lumber and Supply, located at 9400 Brown Lane in Austin, Texas. Search general contractors, subcontractors, and the do-it-yourselfers. We specialize in dimensional lumber, decking, siding, doors and windows, hand-hewn timbers, KDAT lumber, and corbels. Visit us at 9400 Brown Lane in Austin, Texas, or visit our website at gtownlumberandsupply.com. Back here in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth. Fourth and two, the Hawks line up like they're gonna punt the ball. We'll see if they do. No one deep for the Eagles. As the punter backs up to the 35, snap. Goes back to him, it's a little bit high. He'll scramble to the right and he's gonna try to run for it. It's no good. He's taken back, back down at the 38 yard line. Who made that tackle? Number 10 in Lewis. Out there to trip him up. They went for it, and it was no good. And the Eagles take over on downs. 2.41 left third quarter, and they'll have it first and 10 at the Hawk 38. 
It's a good time out by Coach Griffin because I don't think he was buying it either, and he, we were right. So in that possession, after the ball goes down on the 38-yard line, the Hawks get no yards in the four downs. Take off just over a minute and a half, right at a minute and a half. And the Eagles take over in Hawk territory again. Now another running back in the backfield behind Boris. Boris gets the snap, hands it off to number 20. He breaks to the left side, cuts back at the 40. 35 up to about the 30-yard line. Nice carry there by number 20, Isaiah Justice. And a Hawk player down on the far side on the Georgetown sideline. Isaiah Justice gets up to about the 31-yard line. That'll be a gain of seven. Number seven, Caden Jones down on the Eagles sideline as the staff goes across. It'll be second and third, second and three for the Eagles, but we got that player down. We'll take a timeout. You're listening to Georgetown Eagle Football on SHN Sports. The third quarter of tonight's game is brought to you by Nathaniel Funk. Your Leander Georgetown Edward Jones Financial Advisor at 1640 Highland Falls Drive, Suite 801, Leander, Texas, 78641. Learn how he can help you with your financial goals. Visit edwardjones.com backslash Nathaniel Funk for more. Back at the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth, Caden Jones, the senior linebacker, walks off under his own power with a little bit of a limp there on his left. Looks like his left leg bothering him. So the Eagles have it, second and three. Is that Noah quarterback? I believe it is Noah jo Boris, still a quarterback. We'll see. That is still Noah Boris, that quarterback. He'll hand it off to Isaiah Justice again. Back 30, makes a man miss. Up past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Enough for a borrow from Morrow first down. A nice run there by number 20, Isaiah Justice. As we've been informed, he goes by the nickname Paw Paw. Yeah, he told me that whenever we were at Media Day, and I saw him, and I thought, man, you look 35. I told him that, and he goes, yeah, they call me Paw Paw. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Paw Paw Justice. Running and the ball like a young man. Tell you what, Hall, you bet, got his opportunity last drive and did some good work. And now Justice in at uh, tailback, offset to the left of Boris in the backfield. First and 10 on the bar for Morrow first down. He comes to the right side this time. Up past 25, cuts back at the 20, runs over a man at the 15. What a run there by Justice. He's inside the Smoothie King red zone. And he's up to about the 14-yard line. Another borrow for Morrow first down. Nice job. I mean, we've seen all three of these running backs be really patient, wait for the blocks to develop, and then hit those holes. That one was outside because the, the right tackle was able to shove the, the defensive end towards the middle of the field and opened it up for him. Weston Bruce split out far side left. Espinoza in the slot left. Justice in the backfield to the right side of Boris. Shotgun snap back near side hash mark. Hands it off to Justice to the left side, and he'll get cut down right about the line of scrimmage. No gain to bring up second and ten. Nice play by the defensive end for the Hawks on the far side. Yeah, at this point, I think Hendrickson's just hoping this clock runs and get out of here without any more injuries in there, but it's been a hard-fought football game. Eagles have it, second and 10 from the 14-yard line. Bruce split wide left, Espinosa in the slot left. Justice offset of Boris left side, middle of the field. Second and 10 snap, back to Boris. He'll hand it off to Justice to the middle, skips outside, up past the 15, and he'll be cut down about the 13-yard line. Correction, make that about the 8-yard line. And another Hawk defender down on the ground about the 10-yard line. 
A nice little run by Justice from the 14 up to about the 8. A gain of 6 brings up 3rd and 4. Multiple players tonight. You hope they're all right. It has been a battle for these Hawk defenders. A couple of offensive players down, and now a couple some more defenders down. You hope these kids are okay. Yeah, this kid that's down right now took a knee in the side. The other defender coming in to, to try to tackle Isaiah flew over him and drilled him in the side with a knee, it looks like. So hopefully it's nothing serious. This will be number eight, Royce Lynch, the senior linebacker. He'll be helped up to his 88. Oh, I apologize, not eight. It'll be number 88, and that'll be Braden DeRocher. He's the junior defensive lineman. So he'll come off under his own power, and the Eagle offense will come back on the field. Third and four from the eight-yard line. Boris at the quarterback, near side hash mark. Bruce split wide right, Espinosa wide left. Justice directly behind Boris in the backfield. Turn around, hand it off to Bo Justice right up the middle, up past the five to the four. And he should have enough for another borrow for Morrow first down. It'll be a first and goal. For your mortgage needs, remember Matt Morrow, borrow from Morrow. Borrowfrommorrow.com. First and goal, the Eagles have it. They're inside that Smoothie King red zone, the Smoothie King at Wolf Ranch, blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Located in the Wolf Ranch Town Center, and the Eagles will let the clock run out, and that'll be the end of the third quarter, 56 to 20. The third quarter of Eagle football brought to you on SHN by Nathaniel Funk of Edward Jones. Nathaniel Funk joins us next week, Feb uh, October 7th, in the booth with Kelly Duvall. Kelly will have your play-by-play. -play. Nathaniel Funk, a former coach, at Georgetown High School will be on the color for Kelly. And, uh, Kelly, just an opportunity. Coach Griffin thought that was so cool. Yeah. We talked to him last night yeah. that Nathaniel Fox going to come and join you in the booth next week. Well, Nate's such a, uh, a likable guy, so amicable, really knows this game very well. Familiar with Georgetown, needless to say, because he was a coach here. He coached my son when my son was playing. And uh, just excited to have Nate in the booth with us. As we go to the fourth quarter, brought to you by Minutemen Press of Georgetown. The Eagles will have it first and goal at the four-yard line, up by 36 points. And as we kind of start turning the pages for next week, Kelly will have the Coaches Show live on Wednesday night from the Golden Rule, 606 South Church Street. I tell you what, one of our favorite places to eat yeah. and hang out. Tommy McCormick, Cody Hertz, just uh, the whole staff, uh, the whole menu, everything about that place, it just screams – uh, awesome, and, and we appreciate everything they do for Georgetown football and for this community. They just want to be involved, and we love it. Uh, we have a great show out there each and every week. Our own uh, bartender, Nina, uh, that comes in each and every week for us, and, and it takes care of everybody in the crowd. Come out and join Kelly, and uh, Dave will be there, I believe, on Wednesday for the Coaches Show live at the Golden Rule, 6 p.m. on Wednesday night. It's a good time, folks. First and goal from the four. Boris has two receivers right, a man in the backfield to his right side. It's Justice. Handed off to Justice. Cuts back. Touchdown, Eagles. Isaiah Paul Paul Justice puts it in from four <laughs> yards out. That whole drive, Kelly, was handed off to Justice and let him do his magic, and he took the ball and ran it all the way down the field for the touchdown. That also means that those big boys up front were doing their jobs and moving guys off the football and opening up those running lanes, but Isaiah did a phenomenal job of letting those run lanes open up. And glad this young man's getting some carries. He's just a junior. And you'll see that a lot next year. He'll be the uh, mainstay in the backfield behind with uh, Andrew Petter, who will be a senior next year. The G-Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt is up and good. And Aaron Guzman, he's going to have to ice his leg tonight as many times he's had to kick field goals, extra points, and uh, kickoffs. The Eagles 63-20 to over the Hawks. You know, before the season started, we, we, we didn't know what was going to happen at kicker. And then we got introduced to Aaron, and man, he's done a great job this year. He's only missed just a one kick. One or two extra points all year long. Yeah, just done a great job. Kicks the ball deep on, on some kickoffs, and I love seeing that. So glad that Aaron's getting some time. And his folks are our sponsor for our extra points in, in uh, PATs. The G-Town Lumber and Supply field goal attempts and extra points. 9400 Brown Lane in Austin, Texas. 
hometown service like none other. G-Town Lumber and Supply. Dot com 512-992-2510. They are proud sponsors of Georgetown football and SHN. Aaron Guzman gets ready to kick it off. The Syntex shirt and embroidery kickoff. Caller stop by 1911 North Austin Avenue in Georgetown. www.syntexshirt.com. Eagles will line it up to kick it off with 11.55 left here in the ball game, 63 to 20. The Georgetown Eagle Football Booster Club scoring drive summary here in just a second as Guzman kicks it near side. Fielded, not fielded, and it went out of bounds. That'll be a flag. An illegal procedure penalty. We'll see if they'll make us kick it again or not. The Georgetown Eagle Football Booster Club scoring drive summary. The Eagles go 62 yards in seven plays. Two minutes, 46 seconds off the clock, and uh, it's a broken record. All 62 yards earned by Isaiah Paul Paul Justice. Uh, all six carries by him, and he topped it off with a four-yard touchdown run. As the Hawks enforce the penalty on the kickoff, they want a re-kick. And so Guzman will tee it up at his own 35-yard line, and we'll try again. I'd say Isaiah is going to fuss at us for letting people know that, but he's so quiet-natured. <laughs> I don't think it'll be a lot of fussing. I tell you what, he did his talking right there he on the sure field. Did. He made some beautiful cuts, some hard runs. Toting that rock. He told it. And I tell you what, you look at that between Petter and then haul you back to Justice. Three running styles and three different styles that are fun to watch. As the kickoff fielded at the eight-yard line here by the Hawks. Up past the 20, 25 hits the sideline, and he's open. He's running down 40, 45, 50. And then Aaron, Aaron Guzman, Guzman says, get out of here. You're not going to score. He gets it back into Georgetown territory, but Aaron Guzman on the tackle. And they turned the second time tonight, Kelly. The Hawks make the, the Eagles re-kick it, and it pays off. Yeah, it does. I'm going to watch Aaron all the way to the sideline. I want to see these high fives he gets over there for making a <laughs> tackle. <laughs> they better go high five him. What a tackle to save a touchdown there. The, he, Eagle, the Hawks will have it first and 10 at the Georgetown 46. He walk into the <laughs> defensive meeting and be like, boys, you need me to teach you something? <laughs> Aaron Guzman gets his first tackle of the night. This keeps the Hawks out of the end zone. But now they have great field position to start this drive. First to 10 at the Eagle 46-yard line. One receiver right, one left. Running back offset to the right of Smith in the backfield. Low snap, handed off to Miller. Up the middle, the pile drives forward all the way up to the 41-yard line. That'll be a gain of five. Bring up second and five for the Hawks. We might need to interview Aaron at the coaches' show next week. Tell you what, if he's able to walk, as sore as he's going to be, have any <laughs> kicks and yeah. kickoffs he's had. But he's been Mr. Automatic tonight. Seven for seven, nine for nine on field goal attempts. I apologize. And then uh, that many kickoffs as well. Math is hard. I tell you what, at this point of the game, I had so many numbers. These running backs running it for the Eagles. The rushing yards tonight, well in favor of your Georgetown Eagles. Hand off from Smith. Into the hands of Miller, spins out of a tackle, but doesn't get very far. He's taken down there after a gain of about two to the 39-yard line. And that'll bring up third and three down for the Hawks. Well, and this is the game the coaches were looking for, too. You know, there's still some stuff to coach up, still some mistakes to, to get lined out. But the bounce back from the tough loss last week against Consolidated, this is the medicine they needed. And Henderson, uh, Hendrickson doesn't have much consolidation after this one. They face off against a &M Consolidated next week. So another tough game for them. That Snap back to terrible. Smith. He's looking left, and he's going to hang one up. The battle for the ball, and it's going to be underthrown. No flag thrown there. It's incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth and three now for the Hawks at the Eagle 39-yard line. Well, you know they're going to go for it. Good defense on the far side. Number 23 for your Eagles, Brandon Alderetti. Broke that one up. So that brings up fourth and three now for the Hawks. Smith will hand it off to Miller. He dances forward, and he gets held up. Looks like he may have it, though. They're going to spot him here on the near side, just outside the 35-yard line, and that'll be enough for a Hendrickson Hawk first down. There's a bunch of clean uniforms on that defensive side of the ball, Wally. A lot of new names and faces on there on the field, getting some time. Alderetti did a great job on that pass defense. 
O.C. Presley here on the near side. First and 10 for the Hawks. 10 minutes, eight, or let's see, 10 minutes and the clock is running now. 10 minutes even. Left in the ball game here in the Minutemen Press fourth quarter. Minutemen Press of Georgetown brings you Georgetown Eagle football each and every week in the fourth quarter. Now the Hawks have it first and 10 at the 41, or at the 36, I apologize. Man in motion, Smith will hand it off on the end of round. He'll cut up at the 35 to the 30, cuts back to the 25-20. Tackle, balls out, Eagles have it. And that was out before he hit the ground. What a hit there, and I think that was O.C. Presley that knocked it loose. And the Eagles have another turnover, Kelly. Nice job there by O.C. coming up not, and staying with the play and came up and just laid a big lick on the running back and was able to get the turnover and just good stuff going on on the Eagle side of the football right now. Eagles will take over at their own 14 yard line. Ten, nine minutes, 40 seconds left here on a fumble recovery. O.C. Presley, a great backside hit on the end around the end, came around the left side and then cut back towards the middle and Presley hit him from the blind side. Knocked the ball loose. Eagles get it, dunk it in the trash can and toss it to the side, handoff. For the Eagles to the right side, thrown down about the 14-yard line. Maybe a gain of one. Oh, they'll spot him at the 14. That'll bring up second and 10. We'll have to see who that is in the backfield. Is that still Justice? Or is that a new running back in the backfield for the Eagles? Wally, on that fumble recovery, I'd like to put who it was up there, but it's number 54 for Georgetown. 54 or 52? 52 would be Montez Whaley. And a new quarterback in the game for the Eagles. Snap taken, handoff to the running back. Back to the line of scrimmage at the 14, maybe the 15-yard line, a gain to one. That'll bring up third and nine. That was Montez Whaley on the uh, fumble recovery. Number 52 getting down there and getting him a fumble recovery. The senior defensive lineman getting some play in time. The new quarterback, Jaheim Dowd. He was pulled up from JV after the injury to Tucker Griffin. He's now at the helm. The Eagles have it 39 at their own 15-yard line. Dowd takes it back. A quick pass out to the right side. Caught 15 and taken out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. A gain of three, and that'll bring up fourth and six for the Eagles. And this may be their first punt of the night. Another opportunity for our kicker to build that leg. This will be Aaron Guzman. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Yeah, I know. He just I feel terrible for him. Getting lots of practice tonight. He'll back up. He'll take the snap at about the three-yard line. Get away his first punt of the night. Snap is back. Guzman gets it. The punt is away. Low line drive punt. It'll be filled at about the 43-yard line by the Hawks. Taken back to the left side. Up past midfield. 45 cuts back and taken down there hard by the Eagle punt coverage team, and it'll be Hendrickson's ball, first and 10 at their own 45. Thomas Scholes on that tackle. Thomas Scholes having himself a good game as well. So the Eagles punt for their first time on the 10th possession of the night. And now the Hawks have it back, first and 10 at the Eagle 45 yard line. 7.40 left in the ball game for the Hawks, trailing by 43 points. Smith at quarterback still for the Hawks. They'll take the snap, hand it off. Up to the 45, maybe the 44-yard line to take it down quickly there. And a late penalty comes in. Their personal foul on the Eagles after the play. So it would have been second down and 10. That's it. It'll be first and 10. Adding 15 yards on the end at that play. That run was by number 27, Jalen West. And now the Hawks will have it first and 10 at the 29-yard line. Seven thirty-two left here in the ball game. Smith in the shotgun. One or two receivers right, one left. 
Shotgun snap back. Smith drops. He looks left. Now he scrambles to the right. He's rolling out to the right side, and he's going to tuck it and run. Up to the 30, cuts back up to the, about the 26-yard line before he's gang tackled there. That'll be a gain of about three. That'll bring up second and seven now for the Hawks. You know, some of these kids got to be excited to be getting a little play in time. Nolan Rose was in there. He's a senior. Got in there, got a little play in time, and gets to make a tackle. He's excited about it. Second and seven. The Hawks have it at the 26th of Georgetown. 6.55 left in the ball game. Hawks take their time here, let the clock run. Fourth quarter action on SHN brought to you by Minuteman Press of Georgetown. Proud sponsors. Multiple years in a row, we appreciate Minuteman Press of Georgetown and all our sponsors. Second and seven, shotgun step back, handoff in the backfield, goes to the right side, up past the 25, 20, but no, there is a penalty flag down before the play started. That'll be a false start on the Hawks. So instead of second and seven, it'll be second and 12 from the 31 yard line. So that penalty, one of the only few on the Hawks tonight will back them up five yards and it'll be second and 12 now. Well, and, and congratulations to Hendrickson. They, these kids are still playing hard and these coaches have them still playing hard and fighting and still striving, so. Second and 12, shotgun snap back. Smith's looking and he's got to go long down the right side. The ball is up, it's contested, batted away. Good job by the receiver to turn defender as O.C. Presley breaks it up. I tell you what, he's having himself a second half. He is. And he gets up excited and runs back to his spot. O.C. Presley doing a number here on the near side. He almost tipped it up and was going to get a chance to intercept it. And the receiver did a good job of pulling him down to the ground to keep him from intercepting that one. And that will bring up third and 12 now for the Hawks. O.C. still fired up out there. Handed off to West. He goes to the left side, up past the 30, 25, makes a couple men miss, up past the 20, 15. What a run. He dives forward all the way down to about the 11, maybe the 10-yard line. Wally, that's what I was talking about earlier. That kid's running the ball like this game is a touchdown three points away. He's running hard. Third and 12, and West knocks out a 20-yard run into the red zone, down to the 11-yard line, first and 10 for the Hawks. What a carry. By number 27, Jalen West, the senior running back. Three receivers right, one left. First and 10 at the 11. Shotgun snap back, it's low. Smith picks it off, hands it off. And a break and tackles and taking it all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Hendrickson. What a run. <laughs> Great run. That is, I tell you what, Jalen West, he earned it all. That, that, that carry there. What a two two carries in a row, three on the series. But what a two two run kind of a run there by him. The twenty yard carry and then the eleven yard for a touchdown. And he broke two or three tackles, taking it to the end zone, still fighting hard. Jalen West, what a job. And the Hawks cut into that lead. It's now sixty three to twenty six. The extra point attempt coming for the Hawks as Clint Smith gets ready for the hold. Snap back, the hold is down, the kick is away, and it's blocked again. And tackled short of the goal line. The Hawks' extra point attempt is, they're going to say it's good. What? One, one uh, <laughs> line judge said it was good. They're not putting it on the board. 63-26, to 26. Georgetown leads it, so I just wanted to make sure. So the Hawks will kick it away. 5.39 left in the ball game. He put his hands up. Uh, one, one did and no one else did. <laughs> the points are not on the board. So it's 63. There yep, they are. There they are. Two-point conversion. So I guess it was blocked and then into the hands of one of the, uh, the Hendrickson Hawks, and they moved it forward into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Well, that was interesting. So 63 to 28. Henderson puts eight points on the board there. Five minutes, 39 seconds left here in the ball game. You got to expect here you might see an onside kick. For the Hawks, seem to have about seven or eight players up close. That's odd. I went back and watched that, 
backed YouTube up a little bit. No, e the Eagles got a hand on the ball and blocked it. But it then went right to a lineman, and he picked it up and ran it in. If it never hit the ground, I guess it's a live ball. No, it did hit the ground. Oh, wow. So they put it on the board, 63-28. to 28. <laughs> And now the kickoff. The Hawks will kick it low and bounding. It bounces, and it's going to be fielded at the 25. And a good job there just to fall on it for the Eagles. Is number 32. I believe that's the backup quarterback. Jaheim Dowd, he falls on it. And the Eagles will take over first and 10 at their own 25. I'm trying to throw graphics up for these kids that don't get mentioned a lot and don't get to play a lot, but I don't have one for him because he just got called up from JV. Jaheim Dowd was pulled up. He was uh, play. He had taken over the starting role for the JV after an injury in the first week of the season to the JV starting quarterback, and now he's the backup to the varsity quarterback after the injury to Tucker Griffin. Handed off. Eagles run it up past the 25, up to the 29-yard line. A gain of about three or four. We'll see where they spot him. It's going to be a gain of three up to the 20. No, 20 up to the 29. One side's marking at the 28. Now they'll mark it at the 29. Is that Mason Mays in the backfield? It looks like number 34. Yeah, Mason, Mason Mays. Mays. Senior running back. Handoff. Nope, Dowd swings it out left side. Catch made there by a receiver. Up past the 35, 40, 45. And knocked out of bounds. What a good catch and run there for the Eagle receiver. 18. It's into the hands of number 18. That's Cohen Whitman. And it'll bring up a borrow for Morrow first down up to the 48-yard line, but then a – Of course. And now the near side lineman. Line judge threw a flag. It's a personal foul, so instead of first and 10 from the 48-yard line, it's going to be first and 10 back to the 33-yard line for the Eagles. When he got up off the ground on the sideline, he looked at the stands and did a first down signal. So that's what the unsportsmanlike was for. So first and 10 from the 33-yard line. And it off to May. He comes to the left side, gets past the 35, up to about the 37-yard line. A pancake delivered here on the far side line, or near side line, by number 71, Clint Frazier. He took care of his block all the way out to the sideline. A gain of about four, brings up second and six for the Eagles. Clint did a nice job of just driving his guy to the sideline and then burying him after that. Now we'll have second and seven, second and six now from the 37. Snap back to Dowd. It's low. He picks it up. Sling it out to the right side. Catch made by Whitman. 35, 40. He's got a blocker. 45 up to midfield, and he'll be taken out of bounds right at the midfield stripe. That'll be another first down for the Eagles. Borrow for Morrow first down. So I, I tell you what, Whitman doing a great job once he gets the ball in his hands. Uh, make it find in the open field, following his blockers. Another borrow from Morrow first down there for the Eagles. Cohen shifty after he gets the ball in his hands, and he kind of runs. Once he gets the ball in his hands, he kind of runs like better. Low to the ground, good job of waiting for his blocks. 13-yard gain, first and 10 from midfield. Dowd gets a snap back. He'll hand it off. No, he keeps it to the left side, makes a man miss in the backfield, but then he's pack, uh, tackled there. For a loss back to the 47-yard line, a loss of two. They were waiting for that one there as Dowd kept it on the quarterback keeper and taken down for a two-yard loss. That'll bring up second and 12 now from the 48. The Eagles have it, second and 12, three minutes left here in the fourth quarter, brought to you by Minuteman Press of Georgetown. Dowd calls out the play. He's in the backfield. Offset to his left is the running back. Middle of the field, two receivers right. Dowd takes a snap back, fakes the handoff. Nope, gave it to Mays around the right side. Midfield, 45, cuts it outside the numbers, past the 40. Enough for a borrow for Morrow first down, but a flag I thought came in. Nope, no flag on the play. 
Enough run there. What a run there by Mason May. Nice job. Showed some quickness. Senior running back. Again, another one getting a little bit of playing time. So it's good to see these kids getting to play the ball. All the way forward to the 39 of Hendrickson. A nice run on a second and 12 for Mason Mays. He lines up to the left side of Dowd in the backfield. Fire side hash mark. Two receivers right. Now Mays will flip to the right side of Dowd. Dowd looks at the sideline. Gets the call. Snap back. Fakes the handoff. Dowd keeps it around the right side. 40, 45, up past the 30. 35 to the 30, but it'll be a hold there. Thrown by the referee. Well, this one will come back. Be interesting to see just how many penalties are called on Georgetown tonight compared to Hendrickson. That hold evident around the end that sprung Dowd for the long run. So instead of first and 10, it'll be first and 20. Back to the 49-yard line. Two minutes, 39 seconds left here in the ball game. Eagles just trying to run the clock, leading it by 35. Two receivers right. Mason Mays in the backfield, gets the handoff, cuts it back. 45, 40, makes a man miss. 35, 30, makes it Mays off to the races. 25, 20, now all the way up to the 15-yard line. The tackler took him down. Mays landed on top of him and then slung him forward all the way down to the 15-yard line. Nice run by Mason Mays for another borrow from Morrow first down inside the Smoothie King red zone. Good job by the big boys up front moving people out of the way too. Gave Mason a nice hole to run through, and he hit that hole fast and really did a great job. 34-yard gain makes it first and 10 from the 15-yard line. Handed off to Mays around the right side, down to the 15. 10, takes his time, follows some blockers up past the 10 into the eight-yard line. A nice gain of seven on first down. Brings up second and three for the Eagles. Logan Geckelman out there, he's probably getting a little bit tired because he was holding again <laughs> and just got away with it. Second and three from the eight-yard line. One minute, 40 seconds left here in the ball game. Georgetown Eagles lead it 63 to 28. Jaheim down to the backup quarterback in. Hands it off. Mason Mays up past the five. Mason Mays into the end zone. Touchdown, <laughs> Eagles. Mason Mays, the fourth runner of the ball game. Petter, Hallubeck, Justice, now Mays getting on the scoreboard. And the Eagles make it 69 to 28. Mason Mays, the eight yard touchdown run, puts the Eagles on the board to bring you another G Town Lumber and Supply extra point attempt by Aaron Guzman. They should let Austin Nelson come in and kick this. <laughs> <laughs> 75-yard drive, the extra point attempt. Guzman's kick is up, and it is good. 10 for 10 for extra points tonight for Aaron Guzman. And your Eagles lead at 70 to 28 with 123 left here in the ball game. Quick timeout, back with more Eagle football in just a moment on SHN. <laughs> Kickoffs this season are sponsored by Syntex Shirt and Embroidery. At Syntex Shirt and Embroidery, we offer a variety of unique custom clothing and gifts, as well as personalized embroidery for gifts, schools, fundraisers, businesses, and more. Stop by our shop at 1911 North Austin Avenue, Suite 103, and check out our in-stock spirit apparel, or check out our website at www.SyntexShirt.com. Syntex Shirt and Embroidery is the official outfitter of the SHN Sports Georgetown Eagles broadcast team. Back here in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth, brought to you by JMTs. The Georgetown Eagle football booster scoring drive summary, the 10th of the night. Nine plays, 75 yards, 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Capped off by an eight-yard touchdown run by senior Mason Mays. 11 penalties, the three penalties, the official word from the statisti statistician Holden Tuma. 70 to 28, the offense has overcome the penalties. The defense has shirted it up here in the second half, only allowing eight points. And now the Guzman kickoff near side, the skipper, up man catches it. Number 21 at the 28, up past the 30, 35. He's chopped out from under him, his legs cut out from under him there. And he'll get fall forward to about the 38-yard line. And that's where the Hawks take over. 
First and ten, Jacob Donnelly caught that one and made some positive yards out of it. 118 left here in the ball game. Hawks have it at their own 38-yard line. First and ten. Clint Smith, still the quarterback, the third-string quarterback for the Hawks. Rodriguez and Fowler out of the ball game. There are two receivers left, one right. Smith gets the shotgun snap. Pass out to the right side. Caught at the 42. Up to the 45. Taken down at the 46-yard line. Ball squirts out. O.C. Presley recovers it, but they're going to rule the receiver down. So that'll bring up second and about three for the Hawks. Catch made by Brian Ray, the ride, senior wide receiver here on the right side for the Hawks. Back up. To the line of scrimmage, 45 seconds remaining. Snap back, handed off to West around the left side. Flag on the near side. West around the 50, 45. Breaks the tackle, 40-yard line, and out of bounds. We'll see where that one goes, but a flag here on the near sideline. And, of course, it's a penalty on Georgetown. Offsides on the defense. They'll decline that one. Take the result of a play all the way up to uh, the Georgetown 39-yard line. That's 12. Nice run there by number 27, Jalen West. So a ball into Georgetown territory at the 39-yard line. Jalen West has been impressive here in the second half yes, for, the, for the Hawks. Three receivers right, one left. Smith back to pass, steps up in the pocket, throws it deep, and it's going to be intercepted as the receiver cut his route. Wrist interception coming across the near side. He'll make a man miss up back to the 35, and he'll be tackled about the 39-yard line. The third turnover for this Eagle defense tonight, and that's number 23 on the interception. That's going to be Mr. Brandon Alderetti, the senior defensive back. He gets the interception, and the Eagles get the ball with 27 seconds remaining. Oh, bring out the trash can and let's make it rain over there. Brandon. There's the can. There's the ball, and there's Alderetti with the dunk. When when he intercepted it, one of the coaches was going, go down, go down. <laughs> nah, <laughs> not he, happening. Yards after interception. So he gets back to the 39, and that's where the Eagles will take over with 27 seconds remaining on the third turnover of the game for this defense. And you could imagine that Down will just take a knee. Boris back in to take this one. He'll kneel on that one. And that'll be the last snap of the ball game. The Eagles are victorious 70-28. to They take it over the Hendrickson Hawks here on the road tonight. Thursday night football. The Eagles on the, are back home in the friendly confines of the Georgetown Athletic Complex next week. Berkelbach Field for homecoming to take on the Leander Lions. Let's take a quick timeout. We'll come back with a post-game show. You're listening to Georgetown Eagle Football on SHN. The fourth quarter sponsor for this season is Minuteman Press Georgetown. Minuteman Press Georgetown is your one-stop print shop. From business cards to signage and now turnkey mailing solutions for flyers, postcards, bulk mailing, and more. Minuteman Press Georgetown can help bring exposure to your business. For more information, visit mmptx.com. Back here in the JCT Memorial Broadcast booth brought to you by JMTs. They provide customized apparel and promotional items to small business, schools, and nonprofits. JMTs has the experience and confidence to take on any order you can throw at them. Omar, Susie Tonkins, JMTs.com. What a performance, Kelly. 70 to 28. The Eagles dominant. In their return to the win column, they moved a three and two on the year, one and one in district play. The Hawks fall to one and four on the year and zero oh and two in district play. Next up, the Leander Lions Friday night back at Berkelbach Field for homecoming and an opportunity for these Eagles to try to move forward into positive territory of a district record at two and one. Yeah, nice job of Georgetown bouncing back from that game last week and. Coach is going to be pleased with this. There's still some things to coach up, and 
some mistakes to clean up. But here in the Fine Line GC post game wrap up, it's a it's a much nicer wrap up this week than we've had the last two games. So this is a lot more fun. A lot of credit to this offense. Uh, they've done a great job tonight spreading it around. I tell you what, the host of running backs that got some uh, playing time there in the second half, and what a job they did. Uh, credit to give out to uh, Mason Mays there at the end on his uh, running there to score him a touchdown. Paul Paul Justice, Isaiah Justice uh, doing a, a great job in his opportunity to uh, run the ball there in the fourth quarter. And then back to Hollyback. He made a lot of quick work on his forward play drive. Call you back with a nice run, but then uh, Marquise Dominguez, a touchdown. I, I mean, just you, you think back about, about it, man, so many players in the scoring uh, category tonight. Drayden Dickman, Marquise Dominguez, Andrew Petter, Andrew Petter, Andrew Petter, Andrew. Yeah, that one goes on a lot. Ha uh, <laughs> then Marquise Dominguez, and then Mason Mays, and Justice. Names a galore going on and on uh, for uh, the touchdowns for the Eagles. Spreading the ball out. Noah Boris uh, doing a great job. No turnovers tonight for Noah. Yep. Uh, almost had an interception. That got dropped, thankfully. Hey, but if it gets dropped, you just you move on and, and learn from it. Right. And what a job. But you know what? It, it goes back to the offense was controlled by the game of Andrew Petter. It really was. And you can't talk about this game tonight. And he only played first half. the first half and the first series in the third quarter winds up with 100 and however many yards, 150-something yards. The touchdowns, and Andrew could have easily had 250 tonight if you leave him in the game, but you don't want to leave him in the game and let him get hurt. But just a tremendous job of Andrew running the football tonight, and that was impressive. In two quarters and one series, Andrew Petter goes 17 carries, 158 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, 299 total rushing yards for this Eagle offense tonight. A lot of what Coach wants to see balanced attack uh, you look at it Mays and Justice both getting in the in the scoring uh, column along with your two receivers uh, Dominguez and uh, Drayden Dickman Noah Boris I, I think this is something and, and this is going to be fun I, I hate to say you're going to get to do this because uh, I would love to be there for this interview on Wednesday night uh, but I think you've got to talk to Noah Boris yeah I really do as well cause 19 for 22 listen wow. to this stat line Kelly <laughs> 19 for 22 261 yards, four TDs, a perfect QBR tonight. Wow. A junior quarterback in a second start steps in and runs a great game for this offense, needing to come back from a tough two-game uh, yeah. skid and, and put on a show tonight, and he did it just under control. Kept the ball when he needed to, made the passes, made good passes, beautiful balls down the sideline, across the middle, floated in there. Uh, I, I think a lot of credit goes to Noah Boris. And this is the perfect example of it's time for the next man up. And you you hate to lose Tucker. Don't want to lose Tucker, but Noah has stepped in here and done an admirable job tonight, just beyond admirable. You know, you, you, you say you're out of your second-string quarterback, you want somebody to come in and manage the game. Noah didn't manage his game. Noah controlled his game. And, and congratulations and the, to him. And the one person that was the biggest cheerleader for Noah Boris before he ever got hurt was Tucker Griffin. Yep. And he talked about this guy has an arm. Uh, this guy knows what he's doing, and, and he's going to be an asset to this team. And, and unfortunately, in the way in which it's coming about, it, it is true. And Tucker Tucker uh, foreshadowed that for us. And you love to see that, uh, that Noah Boris stepping in. Right. But to see Tucker Griffin involved to help Noah and to be there on the sideline to encourage him to see things that he's seen, to make Noah even better, to help his performance, and what a performance tonight. But then to look at your two-star receivers. Uh, Marquise Dominguez, six catches, 61 yards, two touchdowns. J Drayden Dickman, eight receptions, 135 yards, two TDs. Uh, Drayden's damage all done in the first half because not much passing going on right. in, quarter, in uh, quarters three and four because this, this team turned to the run. But then go to the defense. No receiver had more than two catches for this Hawk offense. Wow. And, and so Leo Diaz, even with the penalties, turned it on. O.C. Presley making some plays there in the backside. Brandon Alderetti gets himself an interception. Thomas Scholes, we keep saying his name when interceptions come up. The fumble recovery because of the O.C. Presley hit. Yep. 3.7 yards per play allowed by this defense tonight. A totally different turn of events after the last two uh, ball games and all the rushing yards yeah. given up. You just love to see the fight. But to, to win the turnover battle, that's a huge key for this team. Well, and for, for Hendrickson, you know it's going to be a long night when you're, you're three of your top five plays are penalties yeah. against the other team. And, you know, f f from, from 
Hendrickson's point of view, thankfully they had those penalties. Or this is even worse on that scoreboard than it was. Coach, but again, hats off to Hendrickson. Those kids did not quit fighting. I, I tell you what, uh, I, I have to say, one, I'm very impressed with Clinton Smith. He comes in as a third-string quarterback listed and playing all night as a wide receiver and defensive back and has to play quarterback for a whole half and part of the second quarter, and he did a good job at yes. the helm. No interceptions thrown. Uh, did a, or One interception thrown uh, on that overthrow. But on that, you even got to give credit to he threw the ball where I think it was supposed to go. The receiver gave up on the right, route. Right. Uh, but he did a good job of coming in, not as the quarterback of Norm, and not even the backup as Norm, right. but as the third quarterback, and did a good job. But then that Waylon, or Jalen West, uh, uh, number 27, I love the way he ran there in the second half for uh, the, the Hawks. He never gave up. And that's yeah. impressive. When you're down in a game like this, it's so easy for these kids to want to give up. Uh, but that speaks to his character and his uh, will to just continue to fight and perform. We talked about it in the pregame, and it showed whenever we did the, the starters. This is a young, inexperienced Hendrickson team. And some of that inexperience showed tonight, some of that you showed tonight. But they're going to battle, and they're going to they're gonna cause some problems for some teams this year. So good luck to Hendrickson the rest of this, the rest of this season, the rest of the way they go. So Hendrickson falls to one and four in the year, zero and two in district play. Your Eagles improved to four and, or correction, three and two on the year, one and one, in district play. Next week on tap, the Hendrickson Hawks will take on the A and M Consolidated Tigers. Your Eagles will be home next Friday night, on the seventh of October, to take and host the Leander Lions during homecoming. Kelly Duvall will have your call of the game. Nathaniel Funk will be in the booth to join him uh, for. Uh, the call and Dave England will be here. Thankfully, my wife Jerry Ann will be back in town. She will help you guys run the show uh, so you don't sink the boat. And because uh, if she wasn't here every week, the boat would sink without okay. her. And so we thank her for being here and making things happen to Holden. He'll be out next week. Take care of yourself as you get the wisdom teeth pulled out. We will miss that. It's so yeah. awesome having those uh, stats readily available I, in the halftime summary that Holden brings with you. I do want to say we had we had this young man reach out to us before the season and say, hey, I like numbers, I like statistics, I like the technology, and it was Holden, and we got in touch with Holden, and he has been just such an invaluable addition to this team and has become part of our family. And, Holden, you're doing a great job, man. Appreciate you. But take care of yourself lot. this week. Yes. Unfortunately, on your four-day – a fall break you get to take your wisdom teeth out right. and really enjoy that fall break yeah. but hey if, if you need something give me a holler and i'll send somebody yeah we'll find someone to come yeah, help we'll you. find somebody yeah. to come <laughs> help you. i'll be out of town just call kelly yeah but we'll, we'll miss you while you're out next week hopefully he'll be back for the 14th i you know i'm almost like challenge him he's got to be back on the 14th it's georgetown eastview yeah we got to have the whole oh, team yeah. ready to go so hopefully he'll be back with us but take care of yourself while you're out holding during your break, getting your uh, wisdom teeth taken out. Dave will be here with Kelly Wednesday night live from the Golden Rule, 606 South Church Street. Uh, for the coaches show on Wednesday night, head coach Chuck Griffin. And uh, I'm going to assume, uh, Kelly, will uh, you'll reach out to coach this week yep. to pick him. I, I think Noah Borson, <laughs> maybe Eric Guzman. Yeah, you I'm gotta thinking talk Guzman, to. man. I tell we you what, you, when, to come in the year, we talked about that earlier, to come in the year and not know who your kicker or punter was going to be, and this young man to step up and not only be your kicker and your punter, but kind of everything, uh, special teams, and he's doing a great job. And, and, and it speaks volumes to his talent and, yep. and willingness and his work uh, to come in and take over that position as a junior. And the comfort is to get all this experience knowing he'll be coming back yep. for his senior year next year. So, But join uh, Kelly Duvall, Dave uh, England, on Wednesday night live from the Golden Rule for the Coaches Show with – Coach Chuck Griffin and players, they'll have another night of trivia. The defense got a win two weeks ago. It's 2-1 to one now. Offense leads it. NCAA football is the uh, category for the week, and we'll have five questions there for the offense and defense to battle through, as well as interviews from the Golden Rule. Thanks for joining us live here tonight. The Eagles victorious 70-28 to 28 over the Henderson Hawks. Join us live Wednesday night for Eagle Nation Coaches Show live here on SHN. For Kelly Duvall, Dave England, for our producer, Jerry Ann, our statistician, Holden, thanks for listening in tonight. And remember, it doesn't cost a dime to be kind. Have a good weekend.